This is Roman Reacts. This is a series where I watch patrons submitted videos with all of you guys. And the first video is sent in by Cosmic Catloaf, and it is The Color of Goodbye, a Genshin Impact animatic. Let's check it out. The Color of Goodbye. Thank you for putting a flashing lights warning on here. Oh man, every time I see those like chords and like... Leave him alone. Get away from him. Leave him alone. I can smell your seediness from here. So let me assure you. You're not the- Oh my god. Leave him alone, I swear to god. Yeah, the colors are so pretty. This the song reminds me of something like from like Tokyo Ghoul or something. I really, really need everyone to leave him alone. This style is so interesting to me. It's like almost a negative space, but it's all colorful. I like the way they put the writing on the screen as well. Almost like it's hazy in his head too. Jesus. Whoa, the style is so... Like what, like in at some parts it's like you can see, like again, it's like, it's I guess like, like you could say it's like a reflection of like, like, because I think like a reflection of Vaughn's mind in a lot of ways. Because like, look at like how frantic it is. Yeah, look, it's for sure, for sure, look at this. It's such an, oh my. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no, no, no. Okay, things seem peaceful here. This is really pretty. Oh my god, that's gorgeous. Where... Where am I? Where are you? I must have fallen... and hit my head. Oh... my head... It's pounding so hard. It's so weird because because the whole, the whole video was so frantic, this the colorful aspects of this part are like... Like, it's like, almost feels like the most peaceful place I've ever seen in my life. It won't stop. Hmm? I think I hear someone talking. Katsuragi? Oh my god. Katsuragi. What the hell? This is like, like someone went with this, this, this video, someone said, I'm going to take Vaughn's mind and put it on the screen. Like that was like the full, like, like to me, that's what I got from that. Like I'm going to take his full mind and put it on the screen in this animatic, in this video. And like, it was frantic. It was painful. And then when it got to the peaceful moments, like it got, went back right into this franticness as well. Gee, that was a lot. That was a whole hell of a lot, but I really feel like it did encapsulate like the the story of of Vaughn. And when I say Vaughn, for any new people that come in and find this video, Vaughn is my character that I called Scarabouch. Um, yeah, really, um, really dark stuff there. And I think like as well, like it's like a lot of Vaughn's like videos. Like I feel like a lot of Vaughn fans, a lot of Scarabouch fans, really celebrate Vaughn through showing, like, the harder times because they know that, like, he is on the right path. And I think that's probably the best way to put it. Thank you so much for sending the Cosmic Catalog. That was a really interesting video. And, like, again, like, the colors of that were absolutely... Something I didn't expect. Something I def definitely did not expect. Um, the next video is sent in by Felicitas Felix. And it is a cover of Let It Go by Albedo's voice... Whoa, okay. So this video might get flagged to death, but if it's a cover, maybe not. We'll check it out. Let's see. Let's go. Is that Albedo in uh, the Elsa dress? I've never seen Frozen. Not because I'm like I don't I don't watch stuff like that. It's just like never got never got a chance to see it. The snow glows white on the mountain tonight. Not a wow. to be seen. A kingdom of isolation. And it looks like 
So is there anything this voice actor can't do because he like also plays Thunderbolt in Rain Code and sounds like a completely different person to Albedo. It's so weird because like I know like 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 what happens with like Genshin stuff is that like some of this stuff is like played for laughs sometimes it's like oh like isn't it great that this character is like singing Let It Go and then you watch it and you're like wow why am I getting emotional? Be the good boy you always have to be Conceal, don't feel I always forget that like voice actors have so much control over their voice that the majority of them can actually like sing incredibly well. Well now they know Let him go Let him go Can't My god Just super let talented go, as well, right? Let it go Turn away and slam the door I know, by the way, knowing knowing the range, very smart. Really appreciate that. We love, we love, we love someone who knows their range. You know what's so funny? I can I can picture this song over like the scenes of Shadows and Mr. the Snowstorm. I can picture it. So good. Because again, I think the reason why this isn't that this this could be bad in any other context. Like if if first of all, it's not about like being able to sing, but it's just like again, like knowing your rage. I think that they're sing like it sounds so beautiful in the tone that they're singing it in. But they might just shock me now in a moment. No, they're good. They're good. They're definitely good. This shouldn't be like. Again, like I'm saying, it's like it's a cover of like a Frozen song that I've like I've never seen the movie of. So now this is this song is now forever gonna be the context of Albedo. It's gonna be forever Albedo's song. I've never heard the full song by the way. So this is the first time I'm hearing the full song. So it's officially Albedo's song forever. <laughs> I didn't know this had like this part of the song. Like I didn't know they did like a little breakdown bridge. Okay, okay, okay. This is so, like, I don't know. Is that Albedo's voice actor in the corner? Anyway. That song is officially Albedo's. In my mind. I'm sorry, Frozen fans. Uh, it's just it's just literally how I see it now. Um, it's so interesting. I've never heard that song in full before. Like, again, I'm not one of those people that, like, you know, hated on Frozen a lot. You know what I mean? Because for me, like, I'm always just like, ah, oh, like, you know, people like it. And that's how I am with most things. It's like, ah, oh, people like it. So who cares? You know, it's clearly good. People like it. But I just never got to see it, really. I don't think I've seen, like, a like a Disney movie in a long time. Um, I don't remember the last one I've seen, to be honest. Uh, maybe I saw... What was the last one? I it doesn't matter. I does I, if I can think of it, I'll put it on the screen. I like I don't know. Um, but yeah, like I guess this is just like a like a like a really in good indication usually of like what voice actors can do. And I think one of the funniest things about like uh, most <laughs> most voice actors is that they have a great control over the voice. They really do. So I'm looking at the other videos here. Um, it looks like they might be. This is, I think this is Albedo's voice actor, yeah? Again, I'm not, you guys are probably better with the names than I am. But yeah, thank you so much for sending it, Felix. Officially now, uh, on as the official stance of the Romer YouTube channel is that Let It Go is officially about Albedo and Shadows and Mr. San uh, Snowstorms. I almost said Sandstorms, that's a whole different uh, story. Uh, thank you, Felix. The next video is sent in by Leanne, and it is the Sumino crew played Lethal Company. 
And it was a bit... It was a bit what? And it was a bit... Chaotic. Okay. It was a bit chaotic. Let's check this out. Oh, that's the comments. Uh, oh my goodness. <laughs> I want to say as well, I know I sound like so uncultured sometimes. I actually never got to play Lead the Company. I've seen like Markiplier play it a little bit. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> No, 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 we have to, we have a job to do, we have a job to do. We have a job to do. Can I just jump and break my leg? Uh, no! Uh, sure, but don't do it on company time. <laughs> what the fuck is that? Over here, don't worry about it. Sino's voice actor, by the way, was born to be like the presenter of a TV show. Like, you know, like Taskmaster? I could see Sino being like the Taskmaster yeah, host. This is the bird. Oh, some, um, someone harmonizing. <laughs> There's a steam leak somewhere here. I'm amazed by Layla's voice actor as well, by the way. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god, wait, what the hell is oh that? God, nobody panic, nobody panic. Okay. You got this. You got this, I believe in you. What the hell is that? It's like a spider? Go, what go, go, the go, hell? Go. They're in the game. There's spiders in this game. No, not leave this way. <laughs> Yo, Daddy, it's just like Daddy, the fade here. screams in the here. distance as well. Uh, over here, oh, over here. Yeah. God. Thank God you're holding that big cog so I can see it. <laughs> okay, so where's the big? The wait, wait, the big what now? <laughs> Don't ring the bell. Don't ring it. Ring my bell. <laughs> <laughs> Do not ring, ring the bell. Let's let's just load as much. <laughs> Oh shit, my jam! Hey, hey, go! Hey, That's what I love about voice actors, by the way. When you know when I hear Layla's voice actor, I'm always like this way. Like it's like, like no matter how many times I I know this, like I've been, I've been, you know, I've been like watching behind the scenes stuff of voice actors forever. But still, it's like that thing of like, oh my god, they don't sound like that in real life. You know, it's every single time. Whoa, they, they sound like this instead. You know. <laughs> Oh wait, shit. Oh, she's lazy then. <laughs> Layla's not lazy though. Poor Layla. <laughs> she's a procrastinator. But I guarantee you her anxiety is, um... <laughs> yeah, what was that? <laughs> her anxiety makes her more exhausted than anything. Was that an oof? Is that the Roblox sound? <laughs> oh, I think... Alejandro it sounds so cool coming from like the walkies as well. Uh, why you? Why? Why you? Why you? Why you? <laughs> you? Boom. Uh, Speaking of boom, I just ordered something for us. Give me a second. Oh. Oh, we get the the the, the best music. Okay, Sino has music on the brain, causing Sino's voice have voice actors music on the brain constantly. What even I'm is so this sorry. game man at this stage? No! <laughs> no! I love the shovel in hand and the sword. Of, fuck it, we ball, so we, we ball. Yeah. I'm gonna fight it. Fight what? Okay. What are you guys oh, doing? Oh, you're going to die. Uh, okay, what are you I doing? I was like, okay, okay, okay. What is it? Okay, I'm scared. Also, there are more ways to that, so uh, oh, let me grab that real quick. Yay. <laughs> it's that. Yeah. Okay. yeah. He's so fucked. Okay. Oh, it's right here, bitch! Ah, bitch! Ah! Oh well, my god. I'm gonna try and kill it. Jeez, that's so disgusting! I, you know what? I'm not even shocked. Uh, I'm Ash, even shocked. Uh, Ash, you better run. Ash, you're on your own. Ash. <laughs> Ben, you died, bro. Yeah, I, I gave it, I gave it the old college try. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy. I think I need to play this game at some point. Ash is on their own. 
Oh, oh no. She's so brave. Uh, you guys can can uh, start heading to the facility. Oh, that's what you'd want, wouldn't you? Yeah, because yeah. we need like, money or else we lose. <laughs> I love that it gets Sido's voice, Sido's voice actor, Sido, Sido's voice actor, uh, Sido's voice actor is like so like antagonistic sometimes, <laughs> like in a funny way. All, all I heard you say was this is funny. <laughs> this is funny man, uh, we have been in contact with the building, we found a regular bridge over- Cause the dry Uber. Uh, copy that funny man, just, get, just cross over that bridge and you're Gucci, over. If it goes well Ben, you will earn your position back. Thank you, voice of God. <laughs> yeah. No, like, the, again, si uh, like, uh, all, again, it happens all the time. I, I'm going to be like a broken record with Kaveh's book director as well. It's like, it's like, 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 how does Kaveh come out of a person like that? You know? I am. Thank you. <laughs> I am. Thank you very much. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it's like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> okay. Wieners. <laughs> 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 that's like um that's like you know when like you don't get a laugh oh, the first God, few times and you just say something so, so inappropriate even though it's not inappropriate though, it's just a we weird joke you know cringe ass jump again i believe in Wait. you oh, okay there's the <laughs> i was looking for the <laughs> okay. yeah you're, you're now watch me beef this shit I got it. Never mind. Okay. okay, yeah, we'll we'll explore this side in the meantime. I'll hunt it. Oh my god! Oh my god! Those spiders oh god, are so run. scary. They, is this whole game just spiders? <laughs> that motherfucker just <laughs> screaming like Tom right from Tom and Jerry. <laughs> I was just again. It's so good on the walkie-talkies. Oh, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it was the walkie that made it so much funnier. Oh my god. Spider! <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think with this accent we're good on quota. <laughs> let's just let's just go back. <laughs> <laughs> the walkies make it like so much more funnier. <laughs> Rude! <laughs> If you end up attracting it because of that, I'm gonna laugh forever. Hold on, hold on, I got it. Hey, you're a pumpkin! <laughs> I earned this number one mug, okay? <laughs> I'm the one who picked that one up, but yeah, okay. But you picked it up, but I earned it. That's the difference. This, <laughs> this is the difference. Is a stun grenade. You, what you do is you pull the pin on it, I... and then. Sorry, just to interrupt again, like, I, I just genuinely think that, like, with, like, like, you know, like, there's, like, there's something about, like, Sino's voice actor to me that, like, is just, like, born to be, like, an entertainer. That, I'm not saying the other ones aren't fun, like, hilarious, they are just so funny. It's just that I feel like Sino's voice actor is, like, always, like, like, naturally, like, performing, like, naturally, like, just, like, they are, like, like, their default out of, like, the womb is performance. Like, you know, I don't know what it is. It it's just... Throw. Like not like not not like not, like it's like you know what I mean? you know what I'm trying to say when it's natural it's like not putting it on it's like they are just naturally a funny person that you know they're that person that everyone's always like you know waiting for them to say something funny at a party you know <laughs> for you for you <laughs> soldier boy <laughs> <tell. laughs> I hate you yeah huh. <laughs> overtime bonus one dollar. Yeah. Hell yeah. yeah. And you get paid for this as well? Yeah, yeah. I'm talking Sumeru. Uh. Oh, 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 this is. I do think it's sweet that the crew do hang out with each other in, right. on streams. Like, that's awesome. That's so awesome. Great song. Blow down, gang. We just gotta worry about all the horrible things that wanna kill us. Wait, what would. There's like a horror. Does this attract a, like they're talking about attracting stuff? Does that attract Shut monsters? <laughs> what is that? <gasps> oh, what fuck. is that? Fuck you, you ugly piece of shit! <laughs> <laughs> what the hell is that? What do you mean, Ashfell? <laughs> what the hell? 
Oh, Jimmy God. Ash fell into the lake that I told you guys not to fall into. <laughs> we got this, chat. Dude, we are so fucking lost. <laughs> no, that's what I mean by Saito's voice actor is a natural performer. That moment there was like, uh, Ashville. What do you mean, Ashville? There was a bit, and Ashville. That is just like, that is just like instinctually knowing how to like entertain people. You know what I mean? And you get that from like years of just making people laugh constantly. You know what I mean? It's so good. <laughs> I'm going to turn on the boom box to help you guys out. It's like hip hop, hip hop penis music. Hip -hop penis? What? Hip hop penis music? Yeah. yeah. What is that? What is that genre? What? <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Jeez. <laughs> Not explaining it. <laughs> I can hear it through the walkie-talkie. It's really funny. I'm just gonna go grab it. I'm coming with you. I mean, I'd prefer it if you guys stayed, just just in case. <laughs> Fine, then fuck you. I'll stay. <laughs> I love the fading of the, the walkie-talkie. Or the fading you. of the voice. Before he gets the walkie-talkie, I love my friend. I love you. Dude, I, heard <laughs> I do love him. Snarl in my fucking yeah. ear. Oh, I had to fucking go. And I was like, huh? Oh. <laughs> you know what would suck? You know what would suck right now? What? If there was fucking quicksand right in front of our ship and we just jumped <laughs> all of us right in it. That would be yeah. really funny, but it's. Does quicksand in this game too? Has happened to me. Lol. Yeah. Lamau. Get the fuck away from me, you freak. This is such an interesting game to me. <laughs> oh, spider, spider, spider. This, what the hell, like... Run, oh, okay, you, run, you can electrocute run. them. Everybody run. Run. That's good, that's good. <laughs> Wait. They're not chasing you, they're not chasing you. Did they just, like, leave? And completely ditch me? <laughs> oh, no. Right, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Get ready. There it is. Kill it. Oh, this is so freaky. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. <laughs> oh no. Oh. He didn't fucking die. <laughs> 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 he fucking dies. <laughs> oh jeez. That this is a good place to to leave it though. Yeah, good stream. This actually like looks pretty really fun. Hustle, I don't actually watch them stream this. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Do they stream this stuff regularly? We would have been <laughs> fucking <laughs> cool. Goodbye, y'all. Goodbye. It's really sweet stuff. Um, when was this video actually made? So nine months ago. So I'm imagining that they still probably stream together as much as possible. Um, I love this generation of voice actors, by the way, and I've talked about it so much because, like, again, like when I was growing up, I would watch like um you know, behind the scenes of voice actor stuff on like DVDs and stuff like that constantly, like because it was so interesting to me. Um but, like, I think there wasn't the avenues to, like, make extra money through your voice acting and, and, and through, like, streaming and stuff. And I love that, like, voice actors nowadays understand that, like, the fandom behind games, whether it be Persona, whether it be, you know, uh, Genshin Impact, whether it be, like, you know, any... like And, so, and here's the thing, let's be honest, it is mostly, like, GRPGs slash, um, you know, action RPGs and stuff like this, like, those type of games... That people are super interested in seeing, like, the voice actors of, especially games that have, like, a large following. Um, because, like, you know, say, like, you know, Genshin is the biggest game in terms of revenue in the world. Obviously not the biggest franchise, because obviously, you know, Pokemon, like, you know, selling those school bags. Um, but, like, the biggest gaming entity in terms of gaming makes the most money out of everything. I believe, you know, I, I truly do believe that. Um, I could be wrong, though. Um, but the, um, like, of course, you're going to have, like, people being interested in every different side of it. So, like, I'm so glad that they were like, okay, let's do this, like, Twitch thing. They probably were doing it before Genshin as well, but, like, it really, like, brings the fandom together a lot more in these videos, too. And it's super funny as well. It's super funny to see also. Um, thank you so much for sending, Leanne. Super funny uh, video there as well. Uh, the next video is sent in by Def Trap, and it is more Yu-Gi-Oh! Jeff Leonard is a player that was able to summon Exodia in the recent official Yu-Gi-Oh! What? Yu-Gi versus Kaiba, but it's modern Yu-Gi-Oh! Featuring Jeff Leonard. Let's check it out. Man, this episode's like like this episode was oh, freaking insane. This ain't looking good for Yug. <laughs> it's over, Yugi. This episode of Yu-Gi-Oh, by the way, is insane because it's probably the last time in Yu-Gi-Oh ever that they had a like an iconic duel that happened in one episode. It doesn't happen anymore. 
Like legitimately, like it 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 doesn't. Um, now actually, they had to do a Pegasus, but that wasn't a full duel. It was like a time duel, but like, like it legitimately, like like nowadays, like they like obviously you can say like Jaden. I'm talking about the this show specifically because like you can look at like Jaden Yuki had an iconic duel against uh, Professor, uh, you know, against his professor with the with the um where he took down Agent Gear Golem. Um, like that's different, obviously. But like it's so weird to think about they did an iconic duel that lasted forever in Yu-Gi-Oh! Yu-Gi-Oh! fans minds in less than one episode you know and here's the thing I'm not complaining about like multiple multi-long episodes I remember like you know me and my friends used to have like watch parties for Yu-Gi-Oh! duels it's like oh this could be the final episode of the Yu-Gi-Oh! duel let's all meet up together you know with my three blue eyes white dragons I'll be making quick work of your this outfit of Kaiba by the way um, like the school like outfit it's so weird to see now because of how stylish she is Kaiba's right this board is full of powerful monsters, and my hand makes no sense. What am I supposed to do with these cards? <laughs> it feels like no matter what I draw, this game is hopeless. That's not like you, Yugi. <gasps> you, you're Jeff Leonard. That's right, Yugi. I'm just another old man trying to give you some advice. Remember, Yugi. Sometimes the line to your win condition isn't always clear. This is never crazy. Give up. This is Trust absolutely crazy. Deck. No, Jeff, wait! He's right. I have to believe there is a line to victory. There has to be. I just need one card. There's no point in stalling. Draw your last pathetic card so I can end this. Year. It's interesting just here, like again, because this dude is so iconic here with all these voices. Cards, Kaiba, but it does contain Neo Space Connector. No, no. Ah! Neo Space Connect. Wait, Neo Space Connector? Exactly. Yes, Kaiba. <laughs> Neo Space Connector, a creature born to explore the ever expanding. Actually, like, like it's animated space. super well and to like many explorers, Kaiba, feel like it's part of the first never episode. Journeys alone. Neo Space Connector special ability allows me to summon a Neo Spacian monster directly from my deck. So come forth, the nautical Neo Spacian. Imagine you, you using Wait, Neo Space magician? characters. And now, Kaiba, by using my Neo <laughs> Did Joey say something? Uh, sorry, I, I totally talked over. Sorry, Joey. Deck. So come forth, the nautical Neo Spacian. Aqua Dolphin! Wait, where's Dark Magician? And now, Wait, Dark Kaiba, Magician. <laughs> by using my Neo Space Connector <laughs> and my Aqua Dolphin as material, I link summon the Unstoppable Oh, it's such a beautiful card. Wait, what? The effect of Exalt allows me to add to my hand the ubiquitous Ignite Templar and send the infragable Wait, Infernoble I know what this is, this, this is. Am I right in saying this, Death Trap, that this is like a dr dramatization of how someone summoned Exodia in like the actual tournaments themselves because that would be super super impressive graveyard, which then allows me to special summon from my deck the incorrigible infernoble knight renard hold it yugi you must be insane if you think for one minute i'd let you go through with this ridiculous strategy what does kaiba this have pile of yours what does kaiba have trash it's so weird like again i know it's the first episode so like it's so normal at the same time but like kaiba now like like in all of his not now like it's years ago like decades ago but like kaiba like in his like battle city outfit and his like you know duelist kingdom outfit it look, looks like the tallest like creature who ever lived like he's one of the most handsome men who ever lived but like it's so crazy that like you know you'll see like he has like like his big white jacket, you know what everything? It's like insane. It's insane. And I intend it's to so put different. it there myself. I activate the special ability of the. This is so weird. <laughs> to bounce the soul back to your extra deck. Oh God. Uh. uh oh, that put a damper on your plans. A uh, little bit, actually. Uh, uh, j just give me a minute here. Uh. uh Oh, by the way, you're supposed to add Durandal from your grave to your hand due to Renaud's effect. Oh, that's right. Thank you, Kaiba. Oh, yeah, don't mention it. <laughs> don't mention it. Probably yeah. would have played Nibiru if you already had it. Mm. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> what else am I supposed to do? <laughs> this uh, is that. All right. All right. All right, Kaiba. It's actually, when I say dramatization, it's like less dramatic than the actual episode. Noble arms Durandal from my hand, equipping it to my Renaud. Which will destroy it? 
allowing me to add from my deck to my hand a level 5 or lower fire warrior monster. And I choose the inextinguishable Ignis Phoenix, the Draco Slayer. Jesus Christ, but it's so I'm weird seeing like a link yet. card in Yugi's hand. Now I'll activate the instantaneous instant fusion by paying 1,000 of my life points. Pendulum card, by the way. Pendulum card. People will be like, fake Yu-Gi-Oh fan. I'm sorry, guys, that I'm like, like, that I'm I a person who's already seen Yu-Gi-Oh and Yu-Gi-Oh GX and only plays speed duels, okay? I'm sorry I don't play pendulums. I'm sorry, okay? I bring about my ace monster, my partner, the unsummonable Flame Swordsman. Huh? Wait a minute. That's my monster. You yeah, that's Joey's card. Uh, yes, Flame Swordsman, <laughs> my closest ally. No! <laughs> my dearest Stop! <laughs> Cease this. Next, I'll <laughs> activate from my hand. I summon the flame swordsman. Instant contact. By paying another 1,000 life points, I summon the sizzling spicy elemental hero, Flare Neo. Elemental heroes, I used to run them as well hey, back when I was like. You can't just steal a card from another man's deck. That's sacred. That's yeah. not a bad Jaden impression. Wait, now. Using Flare Neos in the flame sword Yes, I actually, um, I played when I was like 12. I had like a lot of Elemental Heroes. That's such a beautiful card, so pretty. Weaving a tale of sword and sorcery. Oh my God. <laughs> will it looks like the Orn High, uh, um, host club. No, it can't be. I just don't get it. Never in my life have I seen such a strategy. There's no theme, no clear line. It's just a pile of cards. Neospatians, Ignites. Synchros, and now he's playing beyond the pendulum. In all my years as a duelist, I've never seen such a pile of junk work so fluidly. That's hey, what. Don't insult the junk, rich kid. Okay. Where the hell are you guys coming you say. from? Finally. Did you hear the song? Going fast makes me feel alive. I don't know, but um, the uh, what's so interesting to me is like like how I agree with Kaiba from someone who hasn't seen this duel. You know, I don't really watch the the tournaments or whatever. Um, someone that like like to me like this strategy is is very abnormal. Like even from someone who doesn't play modern Yu Gi Oh and he plays speed duels, it's like it does seem like it's all like very random. It seems like you know that deck you made when you were like five. You know, like it's like I put together this card with this card. You know, it's the beginning of the end. But it's like By super interesting. Two monsters, pretty cards as well. Yu Gi Oh cards have such great designs. Summoning the timeless Time Star Magician. And now I'll activate the special ability of my Time Star Oh my magician. god, it's so cool. By detaching one Xyz material, my Master of Magic will reach through the barriers of space and time, allowing me to search for one Dark Spellcaster monster from my deck, a monster of dual monsters past. The monster known as... The Unstoppable <laughs> Crazy. Exodia. Crazy. Uh. Oh no! Oh, my monsters may appear scattered and unorganized. These unlikely allies have joined forces to allow me to search for the first piece of my ultimate creature. Not that you would know of such camaraderie. Yugi, that's a low blow. I'll have you know I have plenty of friends. Paid employees. Yeah, so the rules are um, with Exodia. If anyone doesn't know, if anyone's watching this as just like a, a random thing. Uh, I don't know if it's changed, but the Yu-Gi-Oh rules were always like, if you get all five pieces of Exodia in your hand, you win. That's the rules. Dragons and Mokuba don't count. Who's Mokuba? But I'm far <laughs> done, Kaiba. Now I activate the effect of the Ignite It's so funny that it's, like, it's a long way joke that, like, Kaiba doesn't know who Mokuba is, but then, like, you know, if you actually watch the show, he, like, you know, adores that kid so much, he will do anything. You know, we saw that in the episode where he dueled Yu-Gi-Oh on top of, um, the tower. Just right before, um, right, you know, in the band smack in the middle of uh, Pegasus Castle. Pendulum zone in order to destroy both of my pendulum scales. But in response, I will activate the protective enchantment of my Time Star Magician. This will allow me to send one spellcaster monster from my deck to the graveyard in order to negate their destruction. And for that cost, I will send Blue Dragon Summoner. Look, every design oh, is no, even like, no, even no, like the ones that aren't very good, they're still cool. Let's skip back here for a second because I feel like I was talking about something. Their destruction. And for that cost, I will send Blue Dragon Summoner. No, 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 no. And now, using my Beyond the Pendulum and Time Star Magician as material, I link summon Celine, so pretty. Queen of the Master Such pretty magicians. designs. No, 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 no. <laughs> we'll gain four spell counters. 
allowing me to summon from my graveyard Blue Dragon Summoner. No, 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 <laughs> And now I will This is the worst when you see Blue something Dragon about to happen and you can't stop it. My Selene, in order to link summon Cross Sheep. Oh, again, look and at these character the designs. Blue Dragon Summoner has been sent to the graveyard. I can add to my hand one normal monster from my deck. The unstoppable left leg. No! This is such an happen. intricate plan. Yugi keeps summoning Selene, using it to revive the dragon summoner, then linking them off again and again. And every time the summoner goes to the graveyard, oh my God, he gets the image. to search another piece. Yep. A loop perfectly constructed to gather all incredible, pieces. absolutely incredible. I have in my hand to Blue eyes chaos to to a meme. Why did I bring blue eyes to a YCS? One more piece. One more piece. One more. Does even though the other Yu-Gi-Oh protagonist. One more piece. And now Kaiba, I link off my Selene and my blue dragon summoner. I think this is this is such a cool loop. It's so cool. To summon Apuloza. And with Summoner having been sent to Graveyard, I can activate his special ability to obtain the unstoppable Exodia. Crazy! Crazy! Ah, All the thumbs. Exodia! It's not possible! He hasn't been summoned since 2010! I've assembled all Is that true? He hasn't been summoned in the tournament since 2010? If I saw this puzzle. live, I would be screaming. Exodia! Exodia. <laughs> so cool! Still, this, this scene is so iconic, still to this day! Still to this day, it's so iconic. It's so uh, iconic. Alright. Game two. <laughs> yeah, there's a second, there's a second game. Um, really cool stuff. I'd like to give special thanks to the following patrons. Bulletproof. Shane Valshane. Yeah! Supreme Sautier. Yeah! Imaginary Numeral. Yeah! John W.A. Yeah! Kojak. Yes. Masturbation wizard. Okay. No. Yeah. Samuel K. Woo. Yosef. Yay, Alec, Yosef. And a friend. Thank you, a friend. I just want to say thank you. And now, a quick little word for my friend Lana, the uh, voice of Kaiba. Hey guys, Lana here, Techno Tenor. Thank you so much for watching. You were and fantastic. If you'd like to hear more of my voice, you can follow me on Techno Tenor 487 on Twitter and Techno Tenor at Twitch.tv. I might start streaming some more Yu-Gi-Oh soon. And obviously, you can uh, message me if you want to talk about voice acting, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, whole Jabang. And uh, anyway, here's Muffler Men. And with that, I'll see you in the next no, video. No, great. Great stuff. So that video is, like, so legitimately cool. Um, I love the idea of, like... Again, Exodia was a very hard thing for me and my friends to summon. It wasn't something that you were able to just, like, summon because, like... As kids, it was probably a little bit easier, like, when we were very young, but, like, now, like, it's, you have to do this type of strategy, because if you just, because, like, you know, the, the strategy in the original show was Yugi summons Exodia, um, by, and, like, like legitimately summons Exodia, uh, by just drawing cards and holding off his defense, that can't happen anymore. Like, you know, you, there's no way in hell that your opponent would give you, like, the, the nine or ten turns that Yugi had in that duel. It, it it would not happen anymore. So you have to have this type of strategy. And it's so cool that he showed it through this actual duel as well. And then showed Kaiba wanted another one after this as well. Uh, which is very, very Yu-Gi-Oh-esque. Uh, thank you so much for sending in that trap. Uh, it was really cool. Uh, these videos remind me of my childhood quite a bit. And it's always really interesting to see this stuff. Like, I was, um, I was playing Yu-Gi-Oh a lot as a kid. My journey with Yu-Gi-Oh kind of ended when I came into, like, uh, like, when I got older... But I, I was one of those people like that, like, I felt really silly afterwards, because I remember, like, I was like, oh, like, I can't play Yu-Gi-Oh anymore, I'm, like, getting older, you know, I'm getting older, and then, like, you know, I think, like, then, you know, I met, like, a, a, my group of friends when I was, like, a teenager, and they were like, yeah, we play Yu-Gi-Oh, and I was like, oh, my God, thank God, because <laughs> I was like, I think it was a lot of pressure, you know, when you're growing up, you're thinking, like, do I have to change, do I have to do this, it's like, yeah, we, we play Yu-Gi-Oh, do you want to play Yu-Gi-Oh? Yeah, it's like, yeah, cool, um, but yeah, I, I, I ran Elemental Heroes for a long time. That was my... And then I did Cyber Dragons as a teenager. Um, then I did... Um, it was mostly... No, it was mostly Cyber Dragons. Then I did uh, XYZ um, Tank Dragon Cannon cards a lot. And now I do Speed Duels. Uh, but I don't play them. I just buy them to collect them and look at them. So that's what I do. I just... I, I make decks and I don't even play the game. That's what I do now. But yeah, thank you so much. For, it's, it's always nice to like be reminded of um, Yu-Gi-Oh! And because I still watch the, the original Duel Monsters a lot. I still watch that in GX a lot. I never saw the other shows. I know I saw a bit of like 
I remember with uh, it's five Ds, isn't it? I remember I saw. I remember like I was like, okay, one day Yu Gi Oh GX they stopped dubbing GX, so like G GX just ended one day on my TV, the channel I watched it, uh, GX on. It just ended one day, and then like I remember I came home one day to watch what like there was the other that new episode of GX, and it was like going fast makes me feel alive, and I was like I remember being so like just like what the hell. Where's GX? And it was 5Ds, which apparently like is actually really well written. Uh, yeah, thank you so much to that, Jeff Trap. The next video is sent in by Geonave, and it is the uh, it's a crew. It gets us in our crew murder video. Let's check it out. Hold up, hold up. Oh, Kava, you look fantastic. Is a dance video? You look fantastic, guys. Look at you. Look at you go. Amazing. The audience is so creative for these games. Oh my god! Look at them! <gasps> Wait a second. This is a this is an this is a, in an anime, right? Because I've seen it like advertised a few times. This is super well done. I don't know the actual um Nikita doing like like precise dances here. Adorable. Oh look at Vaughn! Like look at this, the colors as well. Like, what is this show from? They're so good. Look at look at our Grady. What it is is like I think it's like a it's one of those animes that like I've never seen. But like you will always see this type of this this, this thing on like like advertise every once in a while, right? Like because everyone like I think it's like an intro or an outro, but people are obsessed with it. I don't know what it's actually, it actually is, but look at them, look at all the boys together. <laughs> like it's actually like super like uh, well done. Like the care that's that the Genshin audience has in their series. Look at the sewer crew. Man, I cannot believe like within like three weeks we're probably leaving Sumeru. It's heartbreaking. Well done, Kave. What did I have to tell me what this original show is? Maybe it's gonna say. Oh, they have these little images as well. Nahida. Look at the look at the look at the look at the crew room girls. Look at them all. Obviously, this isn't every crew room girl, but double date, double date crew. This is very sweet. This is very sweet. Um, yeah, no, I love that stuff. I freaking love that stuff. Um, I don't know what anime that's from, please let me know, because I know for a fact that, like, it's one of those things that, like, like, you might not have seen the anime, but you've seen that outro somewhere. Um, because I think now it is an outro, because now I remember it being, like, on a, um, uh, I remember it being on, like, one of those things, you know, when, like, you're watching, like, I don't know if anyone else does this, I do this, where I watch, like, intros and outros to anime like over and over again sometimes like because like they're really good it's like a dopamine rush sometimes you know watching old anime intros it's so fun um and so i'll watch them and then like that will always show up in recommended i think it's an ed now if i'm wrong if it's an opening please let me know too but i think it is an outro i'm not sure what anime it is though um but i know it's a famous outro i believe or intro one of those things uh thank you so much for sending out that was really really cool uh yeah it's it's super good choreography as well i love the, the genshin audience and their creativeness it's so cool the next video is sent in by, let's see here, I was about to read the name of the video. The next video is sent in by Zevi, and it is, Genshin Club has a collab with Dodo Pizza in Russia. They made this video to greet Genshin a happy birthday. Uh, the collaboration characters are the, fa are the family ever. Uh, look at these dorks. If you want a translation of the text that appear at 28 seconds, it's uh, Bakayel Expedition. At one minute, it's Ice Wave. And at 118, it's a taste of adventure. Uh, happy birthday, Genshin Impact. So that's good. Okay, thank you so much for that, Zavi. That's so appreciated. Um, yeah. A lot of times my videos get blocked in Russia quite a bit. Um, just because I think there's like, you know, it depends. Because it's either Russia or 
Japan things get blocked in a lot um, because there's different rights depending on different countries and stuff. I guess like in Japan, like there's different um, media rights, by the way. I mean, uh, like the media rights in Japan and Russia are different than the media rights in like different areas. Like like European uh, rights are different from American rights in terms of media rights. Like when I say media rights, I mean like um, for the best example is right now there's like debates on about like uh, who will have the media rights for like wrestling in America. Like, um, like in Europe, uh, Netflix is going to be able to show wrestling pay-per-views on netflix but in america peacock still has the media rights to that you know what i mean it's kind of different depending on the country and different you know like it, it it's it all depends on who owns the media rights uh completely so let's check this out holy hell collie everyone clap right now even though it's not over i see that be disrespectful Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> this sweetheart. There's your dad. That's your dad. That's your dad right there. So that one is, uh... Expedition. Oh my god, they're on a bike together. This is the sweetest thing in the world! <laughs> look at it, look at the little outfit! the best oh my god <laughs> oh my god look at Slido <laughs> yeah dude So Ice Wave is the next one, by the way. Oh, Sino. 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 You hungry? A taste of adventure. Look at this! They're going to get pizza? In their outfits? They're a mushroom type of people. Oh my god, could you imagine them getting pizza together? Could you imagine this? I don't have to imagine, it's right here. Oh my god. <laughs> so this is what is it? This says uh, right here, uh, uh, final, is uh, the happy birthday Genshin Impact from Dodo Pizza. Gotta try some Dodo Pizza now. Um, that was so sweet. That was like so, so sweet. Um, you know, I'm a big believer in their, their uh, relationship as, like, a family, and I truly believe that they are, like, the best family ever, like... Now, I guess the thing is about Genshin is, like, I really feel like it's about finding your sister, right? But, like, the found family aspect of every single region is so important, too. Um, all aspects of that were so sweet, Zevi. Like, my heart is aching in the best way possible. Some of the sweetest stuff I've ever seen in my life. So, so sweet. Thank you so much for sending in. Um, a Dodo Pizza. I've never heard of Dodo Pizza, but I guess it's because it's in a different country altogether. Um, yeah. Like, I, I suppose it's like, uh, but like the thing is like in, in, in like, uh, Ireland and stuff, we have, like, we'd have like, um, a lot of American pizza places like as well. Like we have like, uh, Domino's and, uh, like when I say American, I don't know if they're actually American or if they're like originally like it's from a different country, but I know that like they are big in America as well. Like, like, uh, Papa John's and stuff like that. Um, we'd have like local places as well, but that's different. I suppose I'm talking about like franchise, but I don't know if Dodo's a franchise, but the, the basic truth of that whole thing was that the cutest outfits I've ever seen, the cutest family going to eat pizza together. It was great. Thank you so much for sending in, Zevi. That was amazing. The next video sent in by Azadrak, and it is the Paradise Lost Artifact set. Let's check this out. Guys, guys, new Celestial Nail Lord just dropped. Pun superintended. Any newly born Scaramouche havers will recognize the purple and gold artifact set. Yes, I believe this is from the same place that I got this stuff for Scatter my Scaramouche. So like this is like all easily obtainable for me as well, right? I can get this any day. I think I probably have a few. No, maybe I don't because it, it's different domains, right? Wildlife yeah. For Paradise Lost. Its pieces tell the story of the goddess of flowers, a Seelie who ruled with her besties, King Deshra so and that's, Yeah, so we, we, we talked about this, I guess, during the R&R quest, right? The idea of, like, 
like the the Seelies being once being a person they were friends with you know the um with the people with with the with the way we described it was very basic as, as we usually do which is like you know the people in the desert you know the big boys in the desert um but yeah this it's is super more interesting is nothing like i had expected or predicted and it's so 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 exciting my interpretation is still very fresh so i may be overlooking some it's okay. salient points at the end of the unified civilization with the war against the second throne the goddess of flowers and all Seelies were exiled from the heavens and stripped of their minds. Her body was a husk compared to its resplendent former self. Sometime after, there's the start of the Archon War. Now, King Deferet chose to ally himself with Ruka Devada and the goddess instead of fighting them. Right. And it seems like this is because Deferet himself had been questioning the authority of the Divine Throne. And we knew they were all buddies. Talk it out with the Primo One. In fact, he may have been interested in a rebellion himself, perhaps akin to the Saritzas. It even reads, Only by suffering through the destruction of God's delusion can humanity learn to rise against the divine will. The goddess of flowers warns Deshret that the heavens won't hesitate to destroy a civilization for doing such a thing. She relays a story about her exile to illustrate. I think it's always interesting whenever like a conversation with King Dejra comes up. Obviously, there's like different opinions from different people about King Dejra, but like, like it's interesting here that, that the Goddess of Flowers is a like, cool-headed one here, and like King Dejra always seems like someone who's like pushing forward constantly until they realize they like probably know how to like uh, make a sacrifice in the he end. Disregards her warning, and it's implied that this caused the destruction of Iconum, the Moon Maiden city they ruled together, and it was consumed by swirling sands. This is heavily implied to be because of a sapphire celestial nail, which Deshret survived, Sussy but the blue goddess glow. of flowers did not. This is a basic breakdown, but what I really want to highlight is the amethyst crown, which tells the story that the goddess told to Deshret. Let me break down this the This is so interesting to me. The goddess of flowers recounts the time of the unified civilization. This is the same time when Salvin Dagnir and others spoke directly to divine envoys, the Seelies being divine envoys. She then yeah, no, I, I, I can totally get that fitting the bill for sure. ...who descended from beyond the firmament bringing destruction. This is the second throne, the alien invader. And they fought the Seelies. This is where it gets weird though. The invaders brought war, but also brought illusions that could break through the shackles to the land. And even more, the master of heaven, Fanes, or the primordial one, feared these delusions, illusions, and breakthroughs. Okay. Now, I don't know what these breakthroughs are, but it could potentially line up with the primordial one and their singular taboo of temptation, which had been sealed off previously, until the second throne came. So the primordial one took drastic action. Fane sent down the celestial nails to mend the land and ended up destroying the world. It's unclear to me. So the so the nails were seen as like a a quick fix, maybe or a fix to what was happening, and they ended up destroying maybe things if instead. The nails were a weapon to fight something, and the destruction was a consequence, or if the destruction of a civilization. Right, the speculation was on it. Okay. The purpose. Interesting. The she goes on to talk about her own exile and her fear of a conflict between the stars in the abyss. Then she gives the very ominous warning to King Deshret. Seek not the master of the four shades, and inquire not of the mysteries of the sky and the abyss. Otherwise, as shown by the nail of retribution, certain calamity and sorrow shall follow. Guys, this is nuts to me. I had long thought that the author of Before Sun and Moon was incorrect about the second throne losing. I mean, they do say they assume and don't know, and it is kind of weird that Enconomio was cut off and the Divine Envoys stopped coming down. But I digress. This means that the Primordial One did win. This still seems wild to me as... The so, like, the Primordial One won, but the consequence was the destruction of, like... And, and that's probably why Apep, like, was um incredibly angry as well. Like So maybe, like, like the the consequences of this, this war with the Second Throne, as they're saying was the destruction of many areas and that's why the, the nails are all there Primordial they were like a like a fix disposition drastically changed because of the illusions and breakthroughs it does kind of feel like a switch from a loving to a wrathful god kind of like the new versus old testament version of god yeah it's also reminiscent of god's relationship with humanity before and after original sin 
I can see why this set references Paradise Lost by John Milton, which is literally the story of Lucifer's rebellion and the exile of Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. I just think like what's super interesting about like um, what I've heard here is that like why like again like with these theory videos just being completely honest I'm never going to understand fully everything because obviously I'm still going through the story and like we're still in a very kind of like even though like we're like a lot a, a while into and we do a lot of lore stuff as well I feel like you know some stuff I'm never going to fully grasp until like we probably like catch up and we can look at everything. Um... But like, I really feel like one that like, uh, like I love that like the um the lore of this really focuses on, like not only just like the the a battle lost or like the consequences of a war, the consequences of the needles coming down, but also the relationship between King Dedrit and the Goddess of Flowers, and how it was a situation where the Goddess of Flowers seemed like a more level headed, cool headed person, uh, but did care enough to give this advice to King Dedrit. This information about the primordial one also strongly points to the demiurge of Gnosticism. In Gnosticism, the Demiurge is a being underneath the actual god, and is a creator of the physical world. They unconsciously model the material world after the divine, but they are also inherently and deeply flawed, and sometimes malevolent. It may be kind of weird to imagine a malicious creator, but perhaps the switch from loving to wrathful is simply a reflection of their imperfection. So like they're so they're 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 they are like considered a god, but they're they're imperfect. So like they get angry as well, they get upset as well. And this was this whole needle stuff is a consequence of their anger. Again, if I'm getting this wrong, please I'm let me know. Questioning though, what exactly did the second throne bring that was so threatening to the primordial one? Was it simply the illegal knowledge that aliens exist, ergo the world wasn't the universe as everyone had been told? I mean, the alien I, aspect as well, by the way, like, I'm not, like, again, I understand, like, when, when it comes to, like, because we talked about this before, the idea of, like, aliens coming from a different planet and coming from a different world, or maybe it's just seen as, like, an invasion from a different region or whatever like that. Um, to me, like, I, like, I don't want to, like, I don't know what that could be until, like, it's confirmed, because to me, like, it's just, like, it, it's, it's just, like, so much to think about the idea of, like, because when I think of aliens, like, every time they say, like, aliens, I always think of, like, like, these, like, gray guys coming down, but obviously it's a completely different thing than, than what they're describing. I would be pretty embarrassed if someone revealed that I was just a normal dude and a massive liar. Could it have been some sort of knowledge about how to assess? So, wait, sorry, sorry, pausing in. So, it is interesting, then, it's, like, hey, like, revealing the flaws in the primordial one made the primordial one actually angry. Because, like, maybe they didn't want to think about their flaws? Or reach I mean, I would be pretty embarrassed if someone revealed that I was just a normal yeah. dude and a massive liar. Could it have been some sort of knowledge about how to ascend or reach enlightenment, which is massively regulated by Celestia? Or was it something more nefarious? I've already been speculating quite a bit here, but here is some really heavy speculation. Perhaps the nails point to the answer. We know from the chasm and dragon spine that These the nails, nails scare have me. an effect on ley line fields as well as human health. It's why the chasm was shut down. But we also know from the lumenstone adjuvant that it has a purifying quality, dispelling abyssal mud. And given that the primordial one sent down the nails to mend the world, could the breakthroughs have been something abyssal in nature? Like, say, forbidden knowledge? And I mean specifically the corruptive abyssal kind. I mean, there are Wait, say again, please? ...purifying quality, dispelling abyssal mud. And given that the primordial one sent down the nails to mend the world, could the breakthroughs have been something abyssal in nature? Like, say, right. knowledge? So, like, maybe, like, that the, the nails are meant to fight the abyss. <laughs> Excuse me, that's why they were sent down. I wonder... And I mean specifically the corruptive abyssal kind. I mean, there are also many descriptions of the abyss being called otherworlding and alien, too. There we I'm go. I'm really not sold on this quite yet. Mostly because my understanding is that the abyss, the void realm, has Ooh, existed since the light realm before the primordial one's arrival. But I wonder now if when the primordial one arrived, the realms were not connected or he cut them off. But by piercing the firmament, the second throne re-engaged that connection. So they all... Okay, 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 okay. I don't know exactly all how this would work, given that leading theories about the world model place the abyss way, way below, or above the human or above the human realm. But is the only way I can reconcile forbidden knowledge being brought by the second throne? I mean, it could also be a combination of a few things. 
So, for example, it's one part the illegal knowledge that the sky is false, and Whoa. then the primordial one isn't as divine as they present themselves. Wait, so what if like those aliens that came to to the to here the the outsiders that came here to this re to the Tevat were like, "Yo, this sky ain't real, buddies." And then the primordial one was like, "Hey, stop!" <laughs> like, like yeah, the sky is false is such an interesting theory to me, and I I I don't know. I and I need to know more. We I cannot wait to find knowledge. out more. Which is a dark corruption that feeds into the temptation for power. Anyway, like I said, this is all heavy speculation. I'm just kind of letting my imagination. No, run it's wild. good. No, it's good. It's I always have no good. Answers just yet. Just tinfoil hats. As usual, thanks for tuning in and hit that like button and subscribe and leave no, a comment. No, really good. I love the. I love I the. I um... the stream over on Twitch with Outlet Desu, where we analyze lore, story, and characters. Oh, cool. And we also get real goofy. So come say hi. Great thumbnails See you here. On the flip side. So if I could say, like, like what happens to me with these lore videos is that like I get super self-conscious at the start. Like like legitimately get super self-conscious at the start. Where like I think for the and you can probably hear it in like when I'm watching a lore video. For the first two minutes, I'm like, I'm so dumb. <laughs> I'm an idiot <laughs> and I'm sweating I'm like Calvin what is this <laughs> um and then like as it goes on it's like oh that's what a lore video is like and I should know that like you know because like it's it's not always going to be this thing that like you get the full picture at the start so like I should always realize that like at the start when I'm like I'm an idiot man I'm an idiot then it gets into and you're like oh this makes sense okay I get it now you know what I mean like you know sweat I get the start being like Calvin you 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 might be dumb um, but yeah, I love, I love this video mostly because it touches on a lot of stuff that I am like, like so interested in. And that is a relationship between the goddess of flowers and Ruka Devata, um, and King Dejerit. I'm so interested in that. Um, and the idea of like the, the goddess of flowers giving King Dejerit advice is so incredible to me, especially since I always like gave, uh, my experience, my interpretation of their personalities. It could be different when we get finish, um, going through like Durja Bilgis maybe, um, but my interpretation of their relationship has always been, or their personality has always been King Dej is more of a kind of like a hothead because I feel like that's the only thing that can truly fully explain how like a lot of people believe he is a hothead. You know what I mean? Like, and, and like, I feel like it's like, he probably has a little bit of like a, a pushiness to himself or like a, a determined nature. And that's why a lot of people believe he was kind of like a tyrant. Cause it's like, it gets so skewed as time goes on. Um, the Gods of Flowers is clearly more peaceful, you know, flowers, it brings up that idea of peace, and Ruka Devada is just, like, incredibly wise, right? That's why, that's what I get from it. Um, and that's, like, the three personalities, I guess, like, there's, like, a determined nature, kind of, like, a very peaceful, honest nature, and maybe, like, a very wise nature from Ruka Devada, and I feel like it's almost like the Triforce, you know what I mean? It's almost like the Triforce of, like, you know, wisdom... Uh, wisdom, courage, and flowers. You know what I mean? It's just uh, uh, <laughs> like almost like wisdom, cur wisdom, determination, and like uh, peacefulness. I suppose is the way I look at it. Um, but like at the end, like the idea that like these aliens, the reason why these nails were even dropped in the first place. Like I'm so like about that theory. The idea, the only reason the nails were dropped in the first place is because they like the primordial one was like, do not tell people this guy is false. Do not say this. And all, or the idea that they got embarrassed. I love the idea of, of a primordial one getting embarrassed. Like, that is, like, this, such a cool detail in any story. The idea of, like, a god, a godlike creature being embarrassed by something. It, 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 it's so impressive to me because, like, that's, like, good writing. Like, that is good writing. Like, the idea of, like, like a god can be so, like, embarrassed by anything. Because you never see it like that, right? You never see... And the idea, the idea of a god as flaws is also an interesting writing point, too. Yeah, I really like this video. It touched on a lot of stuff that I actually, like, I'm, I'm interested in. Thank you so much, Azadrak, for sending this in. Uh, the next video is sent in by Golden Witch Beatrice. And it is... I have to spread more of uh, the Iminoko agenda. Magical witch laughter. <laughs> um, well, let's check it out here, because this is a uh, game that was shown to us before. Um, apparently, it's a very long game, but let's check it out. Visual novel so this is, by the way, uh, a masterpiece in music and writing. Why you should play uh, this game, by the way, I believe that's what it is. Why you should play um, and read visual novels. Uh, I agree. Let's check it out. They're not something that many people consume. Yeah. And even though they're more prevalent among anime fans and the anime community, even a lot of weebs won't really know what you're talking about if you bring up the topic of visual novels to them. I'm here to change that today, such that at least all 261 of my subscribers will get to hear about them. Or maybe not all 260 of them. I low-key haven't uploaded in five months. Huh. 
uh, sorry about that. The college has low key been eating Heck my yeah, ass. Man. So. Totally. Yeah. Totally, that can I'm happen. Back for winter break now, though, so expect a few videos. Anyway, you would back need to, to the do. topic of visual novels. Visual novels are just one of those media that aren't super appreciated, especially yes. in the United States. Yes. And I personally think that's a huge shame. 110. In part because of one specific visual novel that I consider to be the closest thing to a masterpiece I've ever read. Umineko no Naku Koroni, or When the Seagulls Cry, or simply Umineko. It's a visual novel released by 7th Expansion, the same studio that produced the Higurashi visual novels and anime series. For my money, the Wait, biggest Wait, so yeah, the, uh, When I They like Cry, the, that's a series, series that people have been suggesting for me to watch for a long time. Uh, I have the idea, and we've been talking about it a lot now, the idea that, like, um, we would do a show on the channel uh, in the future called, like, Calvin Watches This Show, or whatever, like, you know, or something like that, where, or maybe we make, like, a separate channel. I don't know. We do something like that. Um... But basically, like, uh, like I, I would watch an anime and we talk about it or whatever, and I'd like um, upload the audio somewhere, maybe like, uh, you know, as a as a commentary, maybe like the the reaction as a commentary or whatever, something like that. Um, but yeah, like I've always heard, been really interested in the idea of like um, getting more into like anime I've never seen before. Like someone suggested I've never seen Naruto. Uh, yeah. Okay. It's a visual novel released by 7th Expansion, the same studio that produced the Higurashi visual novels it's and anime really series. cool designs, by the For way. For my money, the biggest reason why I like it so much is because of its amazing music, which takes the experience that music of reading right now is, is that, it's a really good. new level. Perhaps that's not surprising, given that my YouTube channel is all about music. Heck but yeah. we'll come back to the topic of music later in the video. First, a quick discussion about Umineko as What a is whole. this? It sort of falls Satan? into the genre of murder mystery. The events of the novel surround the Ushiromiya family and their servants. Oh, this family They're tree. They're on a private island called Rakanjima, and a typhoon blocks all access from the outside world because none of the boats can safely get right. there. While they're stranded, a series of horrific murders takes place. Supposedly, this is the handiwork of Beatrice, the golden witch, who is said to ah! reside in Rakanjima as... My patron! How could you? <laughs> As the legend goes. Well, why would you do this? Each chapter My features patron. classic mysteries for the reader to ponder and solve, as seemingly impossible murders take place through locked doors in times when everybody has an alibi. You name it. Plenty locked of door murders. Are thoroughly introduced. Locked door murders, by the way. Uh, this is something that, like, is like, I didn't realize was a concept. Um, sorry if the audio has been loud to this video, guys. I, I didn't mean it for it to be to be that loud. But this is a concept that like was brought up in a, in a game we're playing right now. So yeah, it's 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 interesting to see it here to provide context and motive for all of these murders, including family inheritance disputes, romantic interests, and even a vault full of gold, Whoa. which may or may not actually exist. As beautifully as the mysteries were crafted, and as completely as Holy the story hell. was developed, I would be doing Ubineko a massive disservice by simply labeling it as a good mystery story. There are so many other elements to the story that I can't actually fully discuss without revealing too much of the novel's inner workings, but simply taking a look at the game's tags on Steam reveals a lot. Trust me, when people Holy label this hell, game great with soundtrack. tags like fantasy, adventure, and magic, they are 100% correct, and these tags are lot. fundamental to the storytelling. The magical elements of the storytelling reinforce his classical mystery concepts, such as the idea of unreliable narration, devil's proofs or devil's dilemmas, and red herrings. And if all of that wasn't enough to convince you that Umineko is a good read, all you have to do is take a look at the ratings. Overwhelmingly positive... Well, see, like, I totally believe that 100% because, um... Usually, like, first of all, like, when, when people are this passionate about something, like, it usually is, like, it's, like, there's no smoke without fire. There are good, like, it's, it's impossible, like, you know, it's, it's not impossible, obviously. Sometimes, like, you'll find good stuff that you don't like. Um, but, like, I think that already the concept of the game itself is already so cool. Like, especially, like, with, like, this, like, this, 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 this rich family that's been, that a tsunami is keeping them from even leaving. The, or Typhoon, was it? Typhoon, is it? Uh, as keeping them from leaving, um the uh their their island and there's a bunch of murders happening and we know we love a murder mystery on this channel so steam and umineko is actually one of the highest rated visual novels of all time on the visual wow. novel database yes there are many things about umineko to write home cool about, here. but in particular i want to talk about the single element of the game i like the most which is the music 
games like Umineko are often called visual novels, but they're also called sound novels. If the music being played in this video is belonging to this game, and I imagine it is, it is really freaking good. It's really good. Also, this Golden Witch Beatrice, is that her name? I would say that half of the experience in reading Umineko I don't know if they're, her full name is that, like if she or Beatrice in general, right? Because um, I don't want to make it sound like I'm talking about my lovely patron. Um, the Beatrice here uh, is has like the most evil smile I've ever seen in my life. It's so good. Is putting on a good set of headphones and enjoying the amazing music. That sounds great. I could talk all day about the various things I love in Umineko's soundtrack. There's heart-rending, soulful piano it's that really plays good. the most touching of moments during the lulls in the story where you wish the characters could just stay forever and enjoy the sweetness they're currently It's gorgeous, isn't it? Even as you know, a brutal murder is just around the corner to ruin it for everybody. There's that's such a, that's such a good way of describing this because I have the same feeling when I play like a Danganronpa or uh, something along those lines where I'm like, like, or like a, you know, it's like, it's like you wish that you could stay in those moments listening to the soundtrack, be, being engrossed in that world and just be in that world for the amount of time that you are, uh, because you know something bad is coming around the corner and you don't want it to happen, you know? Um, and like, I really th think there's a, such a passion behind this person's um, description of that. Sprinkled throughout the whole soundtrack as the game's most iconic musical themes introduce themselves in the first chapters only to be resurrected in the most climactic moments of the back half. You know how shit's about to go down when you hear the opening song of a shonen anime yes. during a final fight scene? Yes. Yeah. Umineko's got plenty of that. That's awesome. And if you didn't think you could get hyped to the background music of a novel, think again. Beyond that, they've also just got some really dope musical writing. Some of it is orchestral, with writing that's more akin to classical music. It immerses you in a way that a movie soundtrack would with a live orchestra. Um, uh, like the music in this game, like that we've heard here is incredible. I'm not surprised by like the artwork or how well these are written, by the way. And I want to be clear to anyone who loves visual novels, because I, while I don't play a whole hell of a lot of them, the ones that I have played are incredible. And it's so funny that like I am one of those people that you will see every year at the gate when the game awards happen. I am that person that's so annoying um who's like when people ask what's the biggest snub at the game awards i'm like every freaking the whole genre <laughs> whole genre of games and to me like it's like people go well they're not games they're not games and it's like well like to me then it's like you don't like you, you if you want to put games into a box of what games can be then don't you don't want to start that you don't want to start that because then i can look at some games you like and be like okay well then that's not a game it's like well it is a game because you do this. like well no like do you putting games into a box of like what is and what isn't putting it into a genre like like it's like when people go like, oh, this game's just a walking simulator. It's like, you don't want to start that stuff because there's going to be a game you love down the line that all, a lot of people are going to think doesn't feel like an actual video game, right? Because again, first of all, why would you even care? Why would you even care? Like, oh, this game doesn't seem like a game to me. Okay, then, you know what you could do? Go play a different game. Go play Go play with yourself somewhere. N that sounded wrong. Go play a video game somewhere. Um, but like, you know what I mean? It's like, I respect them so much because the writing is so incredible. Um, the most recent visual novel I played was on the switch and it was the famicom detective club um i played this the the duo game of that the the, the collection and it was really incredible um and people go well you have to be pressing buttons to for it to be a game okay i'm pressing through the dialogue what now fight me in the streets Sorry about that, Golden Witch Beatrice. Me, me using, me using Golden Witch Beatrice's submission to stand on a soapbox about visual novels. Performing just for your experience of the story. Others can only be described as raving, with EDM and yeah, like it's such a different change. Providing energy levels you never even realized were possible to achieve when you're reading a novel. The music in this game really is just next level and you can probably anticipate some more Umineko related music content in the channel down the line, whether that's going to be piano covers or more in-depth analysis of specific songs. Most of you watching my channel are here because you think that the musical experience in watching anime is just as important as any other aspect. For those of you who are like that, I promise you Umineko will 100% appeal to you and yeah. you will not be disappointed. Overall, I think that reading visual novels are an experience that not enough people ever really try out. Yes, it's and about not trying it out. Like Umineko exist, I honestly find it to be a huge shame. I think the art is so pretty here as well. Look at this. When I say that Umineko is one of my favorites, 
By it's the way, not my single favorite. Sorry for interrupting you again because I just have to go back to this thing because I didn't you expect there to be a big be battle spear. Overall, I think that reading visual novels are an experience that not enough people ever really try out. And when masterpieces like Umineko exist, I honestly find it to be a huge shame. I'm not yep. exaggerating when I say that Umineko is one of my favorites, if not my single favorite work of fiction that I have ever wow. consumed, including all of the TV, movies, anime, and books I've gone through in my life. I sincerely hope that anybody watching this video feels at least a little bit compelled to check it out, because it'll open up a whole new world to you full of great media to consume, and you will get to read and listen to an experience oh, unlike any other. Thank you so much for watching this video. I feel so compelled to play this game. Saw, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps out and I appreciate it. I've been thinking about the different types of content I've been able to produce while I'm in college, and I realize that with the amount of time crunch that college provides, these edited, pre-written scripts are not videos that I can effectively churn out all the time. So I'd like to hear from you guys. What type of videos would you like to see from me that aren't necessarily these an analytical video essay type deals? That take up a lot of time and are really hard to do. Honestly, you did a very good college. job with this. Let me know in the comments in, below. Especially during I'm college. Open to any and all ideas. And most importantly, I want to give you guys content that you guys enjoy. During college, and I was making two 20 minute Thanks videos. Thanks for watching. This has been Syntax. Five days a week only. Signing off. And that was like Skyward Sword, you know what I mean, back in the day. But no, that was, that's, that's, that's I, I love videos, I guess. And again, like, I guess, like, you know. I, I will I stand on soapbox a lot in Roma Reacts a lot. You know what I mean? I understand that like it's like um uh like that that sometimes like I can I can maybe stand in the soapbox a little bit too much. Um but like I, I really do uh believe that like it is a underappreciated genre of games. Now here's the thing, I totally understand that you have to be in the mindset. That you have to be in the um the, the mindset to be able to want to play a visual novel. It, it's not something that, like, a lot of people, you know, you know, because the thing is, if you're someone who's, like, very, like, I understand if you're, like, someone who's, like, very hard, it's hard to concentrate sometimes, that can be something that's, like, very difficult to do. Um, so I'm not just saying that, like, oh, but, like, uh, like I'm not just saying, like, oh, you sh if you don't try it, then you're chilly. I hit the microphone. That, I'm not angry, okay? That would look, that would, now because I boxed the microphone, Max, it looks like I'm angry. Um, <laughs> the What I would say is this. If you ever get the chance to try a visual novel, do so. Like, just try it. It's not gonna, like, um, there's, there's a, if you have a Switch, there's a load of them on the Switch. You could try it out. And if you don't like them, you don't like them. That's so cool, but I just don't like the disregard for them. I really don't. Because I think 13 Sentinels came out and like it's a mixture of an adventure game and a, and a visual novel. Uh, so that got a lot of people appeal appeal to it as well. Um, but I remember like even when 13 Sentinels came out, people were doing their best to be very dismissive of it because like a lot of people were legit saying like, I say this by the way, 13 Sentinels is the best story I've ever seen in a video game. Like 13 Sentinels is, I've never seen a better story in a video game for me. And I remember legitimately, whenever I would say something like that, people would be like, oh, but is it a visual novel? And you're like, what are you going to say next? You know, you know, you're like, what, what, what's that? What's the next line? What's the next line? I'm just saying like, you know, like it's, it's, it's what, what type of game is it? And I'll be like, oh yeah, it's kind of like visual novel adventure. And it's like, oh, okay. And then I'd say something like a few months later, where I'd be like, oh, you know, it is like the best game I've ever seen in the best written game. Of, like not the best game, but the best, best writing I've ever seen in a game, the best story I've ever seen in a game. And then again, I'll get the replies of like, but isn't that like a visual novel? And you're like, but, but isn't that? What do you mean by, but isn't that? What do you mean, but isn't that, huh? Because um, I think people always want to put qualifiers on that stuff uh, to not acknowledge them as much as they can. Uh, it's the same thing with like the, the game awards. The game awards aren't the be all and end all. They aren't, but like the, legitimately now they are the the most, the biggest place where people get acknowledged for the video, for video game achievements. They are. It is the biggest place now. So like, you have people go up on stage making fun of visual novels and stuff like this. And I imagine for people who make games who work so hard on these type of visual novels, they probably are a little bit like, oh, Jesus, dude, like I'm, I've been working so hard on this, you know? And like visual novel games are always just like played off as a joke now. Uh, I don't know, I, I, I'll get off the soapbox for a bit because I, 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 it is something I am very passionate about and I don't want to get too, too, um, <laughs> too passionate to the point that like it's like, ah, uh, shut up, Calvin. Uh, but thank you so much for sending in Golden Age Beatrice. Um, it looks like it's a really cool uh, 
game it looks like and the music is really really cool so thank you so much and sorry for using your submission as a soapbox um, I, I, I appreciate you sending in uh, that, that video the next video is sent in by Angel313 and it is let's see here it is Van Teel UK Yesterday okay Okay, let's check this out. Oh wait, the tooth. The tooth of the character, look. Is this alien stage? Is that what we're looking at here? Even Teal is, is a ship name, isn't it? Yes. Oh, but they're in like, um... Oh my god, you know I love what they do with this with characters. I didn't expect this at all. Oh my god, I love that little glare coming out there. I rec Again, the tooth, I'd recognize instantly anywhere, you know what I mean? This is so interesting, because I, I didn't expect to see these at all. Adorable. Adorable. Absolutely adorable. The colors are so good! It's so, you know what's so nice to see them in this context? You know what I mean? After like Alien Stage is so incredible. It's so incredible. So it's all weird to see them like in the context of like actually having like maybe like some bubbly fun, you know? Like look at this. I think I'm gonna be sick. What's happening to me? It's such a strange feeling. Yes. Great outfits, by the way. The green hoodie. This is such a good, by the way, the lyrics are such a good interpretation of, I love the colors in this, look at this. The lyrics are such a good interpretation of, like, what it feels like to actually have that, like, you know, that, that feeling of love, right? Where you're like, is it showing on my face? I don't get what I'm feeling here. It's like, oh my god, I feel sick, you know? Even before the relationship even happens. Yes, you feel like an idiot! The dead. The, the, the artwork's gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Yeah, with that red face. No! No! Again, this is great. Yeah! <laughs> Again, how could you not find that adorable if someone like you liked did that? You know what I mean? Like, I, I just find it adorable. No, no. This is gonna be there's something they tell for years. Oh my god, the way they show like the actual. Oh, it's so sad. It's so sad. Alien Stage was, is incredible. It's absolutely incredible. I, I can't get over how good the colors are in this. It makes it, but every time they show them with those outfits, like, right, it takes me right back into, like, you know, the sadness of what was happening and how terrifying that story is. Look at the drawing with the flower of the tongue. Great key change. I get the art with the animation. This is, I wish I could do this. Like the animation. Grab hands. Again, just when you see the collars, right? The collar on them and stuff like that. Oh no. This just went from the most beautiful thing in the world to a beautiful thing that's gonna make me cry my eyes out. Oh my god. Before the sun sets in us. Please God, do something. This, the artwork is incredible in this. Man, I'm like, like, it's like, like, Alien Stage is perfect at that, by the way. I like snapping you into reality. And I feel like that's like what happens a lot with the characters in Alien Stage 2, where they're like snapped back into reality. And like with this itself, like it's like I was like, oh my god, yes, oh it's so cool seeing them like in their like in ordinary and more modern clothes and stuff like this. And then like you see them, you're like, oh, Alien Sage is depressing, and it's it's beautifully depressing, and it's like a beautiful story. But like, oh my god, you're like snap right back into it. 
It was fantastic error. It really was. I have to make a compilation of all my reactions to Alien Sage at some point. Oh, now the rain pour- come on. Thanks for- thanks for viewing. Thank you for making. That's probably the best way to put it. Absolutely fantastic. Um, yeah, beautiful artwork, like, beautiful song that went along with it. I wasn't expecting an Alien Stage thing, I'll just be honest, like, I really wasn't expecting Alien Stage in this, uh, because generally, like, I don't, um, like, like, we haven't had it in a while. Now, I do know that, like, Alien Stage may be making a bit of a comeback soon, like, there might be another, um, episode coming soon, I don't know. Um, we, yeah, I might make a compilation of all my Alien Stage reactions put together. I make it a separate video, um, but I might do it on a week that maybe I'm like super busy and like have a sp uh, like I can't really like because that, that comes up at some points. So when you're like, there's some days where you're like, oh, I can't record this day because of this. So like, usually there's like one less video a week. It might be good to fill that slot with just like you know quickly splicing together every single reaction in the alien stage. That might be a good idea. But yeah, that was super super pretty. Like I can't get over how good sometimes animators are because like again I draw, but like I don't know how I could ever get to this stage. Like it's such beautiful work. They do such a fantastic job with that stuff. It's gorgeous. And like, again, broken record here. I was like, so like, like again, and this is what Alien Sage does. It's so it's like almost perfect. It like snaps you back into reality, right? It's like, oh yeah, like this is like something that like is going to end up horribly in the end. But it was so cool seeing them like in the order goes, how you interpreted that. That tooth, I could notice a mile away, a mile away. Thank you so much for sending an angel. That was really, really cool to see. Um, I think like with Alien Sage, like I'm just, I, I said it before with, um, a lot of this uh, Alien Sage a million not one times and I'll say it again. Should, like, I can't believe no one's like tried to like corporate business it, you know? And by corporate business, I don't, like, I have to say I love independent artwork. I'm just so shocked that no one's tried to like buy it for millions of freaking dollars. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, thank you so much, Angel. Uh, the next video is sent in by Minu. And it is another Honeyworks thing. This is featured Hanon Jinsei Wa, uh, Psycho Nahima Tsabushi. And the Honeyworks stuff, um, I am always so into. Uh, the, you know, again, I'm a big person who, like, I you know people can be like, you know, oh, Calvin loves his colors. Like, you know, get a coloring book. I know I'm joking. <laughs> I love, like, like beautiful colors. I love vibrant colors. Uh, I love art design. I love seeing different art design and Honeyworks like has like all those beautiful things I really love about this and it's able to tell a story through like you know you know even if I don't know the language sometimes it's able to tell a story. So let's check this out. And this time there's subtitles. I I did it late, so here we go. If I now were to die, yes, yes, there would be. I would cry. Look at this interpretation. Here. I think flowers. When a girl lies into flowers, like, and I think we're always gonna think of like, like, uh, you know, Ophelia. Always, you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's probably gonna be difficult not to. Oh, we've got anyway. Right. Sometimes it can feel like this. Please don't ever think like that. I wanted to have that face. Again, such pretty artwork. Again. And they find new ways to like tell these stories like with visuals in these in these videos all the time. Or are you thinking about your sister? Oh wait, hold on, I want to go back to that lyric for a second here. I'm dying him to anything, everything out. So she's saying that she's saying that like it's like when you express how like sad you are at something and then like you can't even delete it after because there is a moment of like you know when you like you like vent on like online social stuff and then you go like um like maybe I'm getting again that wrong no I can't even delete my secret accounts where I express my unhappiness maybe it's oh maybe she's saying that like like she 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 needs them almost like because she like she she would like to delete them but she needs to. Maybe that's it. Oh, jeez, I'm miserable. Oh, I feel so bad. No, you're amazing. No, you wouldn't. You wouldn't. This is so sad. Whoa. So interesting to have like a black and white style here. Yes, there was so many. I, I'm sorry, like I'm talking like, like as if I'm in this video myself, like screaming, like outside a window, like, um, 
I don't know. Like, I really feel like it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's one of those things that like gets to me a lot because like I don't want anyone, like you don't really, you don't want anyone to feel this way, you know? Oh, like falling into falling into like the, the sky as well. Yes, man. Like the the, the music so people the music so sad. So you get some beat. Is it? Yes. Yes! Yes! Wow. Holy hell, it looks nice. That's a cool. Listen to that. Listen to music. Right. I think there was also like a, a frame area for comparing her to her sister, which is not what you want you not want to do as well. Yes, exactly, exactly. You tell them, you tell them, you tell them. Irrelevant. No, no, no. Again, this like I wonder what like um like the lyrics are so like sad like at points. Holy hell, the idea of like, hey, if I die, will I even make the news? Like at that point, you're thinking you you are like at a stage where like you were you are super worried about your position in life. It's not nice, right? Holy hell. Jesus. Who cares about those people that be that like that that give you grief. Yeah, I was just talking about the little things that like make you happy. It's like the artwork's so beautiful, it's so gorgeous, so cute. The music is so upbeat and lovely. Look at the art style here; it's incredible. Oh my god! Yes, yes, and you're incredible. We know you're incredible. Yes. Oh my god, guys. I'm like so again. I've got I've grown attached to this family. <laughs> I'm like I'm so attached to this family that I want nothing to happen to them. You know what I mean? Like it's it's crazy. Look at this. Wow. The music is so interesting. It's they, I, like they're using new instruments every time. I'm just like cheering, cheering her on. It's a good way of looking at it. When was the last time you saw the sky? It's gorgeous. Everyone would miss you. Everyone would miss you. I would. And by the way, like... She showed, like, first thing, I got something to eat. I, I watched my favorite drama, so I went for a walk. Like... I feel like it is like a, a song about like, hey, like, you know, it's like, would would people miss me? But also at the same time, it's like, then like the, you kind of snap into reality where you're like, okay, no, no, I have these things I really like. And like, sometimes life is about those small things. You know, sometimes it's like, it's like, oh my God, I can't wait for dinner. I can't wait to have lunch. I can't wait to get coffee. And if that's the stuff that gets you true every day while you're working on the other like deeper aspects of it, holy hell do that, please. But we know how much like, you, no, you will not forget. God, you know we know how much people love you. We know this. Yes. Huh. This is so like so deep. Yes, you do. This is gorgeous. Like so, like again, like like all of the artwork here was absolutely fantastic. This scene in particular, for some reason, got me a lot. I don't know why. Like again, like the way they, they draw the stuff and the way the colors are. But like again, one one thing that happens a lot with like um these songs is that they have like a lot of deeper meanings to them. This is something as well. Like you know, and it's definitely thinking about her sister and comparing herself to her sister, um especially since her sister. But her sister supports her so much. Supports her so much. Um, but it can be difficult, man. It can be difficult. And we know in previous... I don't wonder if th things change or if you're just putting on a happy front because we know in previous videos she's also talked about how like she um, um, doesn't want people's opinions to get you. And I'll say this to you right now, guys. Like My philosophy in life has always been the same thing. Yeah, I do not give a damn. If someone doesn't like me you're, like for, for bull 
crap reasons, like the opinion becomes irrelevant to me. You know what I mean? That's what happens. Um, but yeah, like, and that's that's the way you should look at it. Um, like, I don't know. Like, I can't even believe my secret cards where I express my happiness is such a, like a, a line as well. A lot deeper than like, again, they've always been very deep and they've always had very deep emotions uh, strung throughout like the, the, the lyrics and the visuals, um, even with how upbeat and gorgeous it looks and how the music can be. Uh, and I think that's like a perfect interpretation of this character as well because uh, they have always been um, someone who like like is a very upbeat person but still feels that doubt within themselves all the time. And I think that's like so important to acknowledge as well. Thank you so much for sending those in, uh, Minu, because like I'm getting super attached to these videos. <laughs> super attached. Uh, and they're absolutely gorgeous, even if they are like sometimes sad, but I guess like they have to be like as well. You know what I mean? They have to be as well. Uh, yeah. Uh, the next video is sent in by Fizzle. And it says, not entirely in character, but uh, there, it's not it got some great parts. Also, I have to keep the Vaughn train going for as long as I possibly can. So this is another Vaughn video. Uh, and it's called Scaramouche Wants Attention. I always wanted attention in school, like to a sick degree. <laughs> Do you remember when you were in uh, elementary school, grammar school, and a kid in your class would come to school one day, and you'd find out their grandparent had oh, died? No. And they would get like so oh, much attention. Oh no! You know the teacher would be like, "Aaron's grandpa passed oh, away." Oh no! And he'd be like, "That's right." Are they using Kazuha? And we'd be like, "Oh, Aaron," you know. And he'd be like VIP for the day. <laughs> he'd be like, "Can I sit in the beanbag chair during?" Oh, looking for little Kazuha though. Be like, "Of course, you poor fuck, you sit there." <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! Forget the fact that there's a laminated construction paper list of whose day it is to sit <laughs> oh, no. in the beanbag chair. And we've all been patient waiting for our Eat day. waiting for his and day. And let's even forget that the beanbag is there to teach us patience. You just jump the <laughs> oh, line. God. Did you ever look at how much attention that dead grandparent kid was getting? And did you ever, like me... No, no. Hope? No! <laughs> Never! Or maybe even... No, <laughs> no. Pray. <laughs> the visuals of this are so funny. Please kill one of my grandparents so I can <laughs> get attention too. I did, I did do that. And some of you did too. <laughs> and I know you did, because you started laughing from the very beginning of the joke. <laughs> also, you were a little kid, so you probably still had like four grandparents. All these, oh no. <laughs> this is a lot of grandparents. Yeah, Miko, Senora, Nahida, and, and the Raiden Shogun. Is this too many? I'm, I'm, I don't know, I'm asking. Look, goddammit, I'm not saying you pray to kill one of the important ones. Jesus. But you could kill one of the unimportant oh ones. Oh my god. Oh my god. You know who. It doesn't seem like she did a very good job. Dear Lord. And again, I know this is not fully in character, of course. Like it's just a, it's just a joke, obviously, that comedian made that's laid over it, like. But holy hell, like, I don't like, for me, like, as a, like, I don't know, I, I probably did, like, I think everyone, like, as a kid, everyone liked attention. I don't think I ever thought like this, though. I don't think I did anyway. Because, like, I think, I think, like, even when, like, when, like, um, like, when my grandparents died, I don't think I told the, the, the class when I was a kid. Like, I think I would have been, like, uh, 11 or 12 or something. I don't think I would have told the class. I guess it's probably too old to tell the class, maybe, though. Like, I don't think I told the class. She is an unpleasant older lady. She's never done nothing for no one. <laughs> but she could now. She could die. <laughs> Between September and May. Real hell? talk, Boston. When I was in elementary school, my grandma died over the summer. It's so dark, isn't it? It was useless. <laughs> you can't be walking into school on Labor Day <laughs> talking about, we lost our grandma July 17th. 
You should be over it by now. Get out of the beanbag chair. <laughs> yeah, Miko's the teacher. <laughs> well, I apologize for beginning the show on such a... It's done in a very playful way that's talking about like when you were a kid, how like you want attention. And it's very clear that this comedian's playing it up as well, like, you know. Um, great drawings as well, like, but like, oh, I was like, I was like, I knew where it was going as soon as I saw, like, remember that kid who comes in and their, their grandparents died? Um, yeah, it's, uh, pretty crazy. Pretty crazy submission missile. Um, I think, like, with, 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 um, with that, like, it's like, I think what was so, was so, uh, well made about that was, like, the fact that, like, they had, like, the, the, um, Raiden Shogun as the character who is, like, Scarabusha, who Vaughn is like, I don't care about this, this one never did anything for me, you know, even though it's obviously not the grandparent. Uh, yeah, I don't know who the original comedian was, though. I don't know who the original comedian was. But, yeah. Uh, that was, uh, <laughs> it's so, it's so crazy because, like, again, like, like I said, it's like, like, have you ever been online and someone's like, I'm into dark humor, and then they're like, they're like, I'll give me an example, and they give you a joke, and it's like, that is, like, the most effed up shit I've ever heard in my life, but, like, this is the type of stuff where I'm like, oh, this is, like, not, like, dark, it's more just, like, you know, a very, um, because I don't want to call it dark, because I'm, like, saying, like, that, like, mine, and, like, because I, cause I don't think me or Fizzle has dark humor, but it's more like a case of, like, it's kind of like a, a like a, a, a touchy subject to, to joke about, but it's a joke that actually is played off very well, because it's obviously, like, from the perspective of a kid and stuff, I suppose. I don't know if that's explaining it properly. Uh, thank you so much for sending it, Fizzle. Uh, the next video is sent in by uh, Hiori. And it's in case you didn't know, Fisher will laugh and deal emotional damage to the enemy after she finished her normal attack. Hold up a second. Oh, the laugh is so good. It is emotional damage, by the way. I love the laugh. Fish is the best. Fish is a perfect character. This music as well. This is Fisher's other outfit, by the way. She's such a perfect character. I love, I love the laugh after she hits someone. It's so official. And she deserves a two, by the way. She deserves a two, by the way. She really does. Um, she is a, uh... A perfect character who deserves to laugh at every single enemy she fights against. Yeah, like I did. I guess I don't notice that all to get time when, like, I know she like when she does her move, she does a like move. But I always thought it was just like her, like doing like, ah, oh, I'm perfect. But I guess the laugh in different languages is more apparent, maybe as well. Uh, thank you so much for sending the Yori. That's that's beautiful to see. Anything official, we're so happy to see. Uh, the next video is sent in by Jay Blake, and it is this 18 second clip lives rent free in my head. Let's check it out. Uh, Scarabus tries to sell you a Honda. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted a Honda. Yeah, I know everybody's different, but for me, how could you go wrong? Take the new 27. It's like a, like it's like one of those like really like those cheerful ads you see where you're like, okay, like that's a like you know like it's like uh it's like it's like when I use uh, Fixident, when I use uh, Colgate, you know what I mean? Like it's it's one of those ads. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted a Honda. Yeah, I know everybody's different, but for me, how could you go wrong? Take the new 2017 Honda Fit, for instance. It's got a great look, gets great gas mileage, and it's way fun to drive. <laughs> and I could fit my surfboard in there. Stoked. You just can't go wrong with a name like Honda. Again, like, I thought it was, like, like, again, I want to watch it again here just to say, because, again, the voice is, like, so, like, uh, like, one of those happy commercial things, I suppose, is what it is. Um, let's see. Ever since I was a kid, I always wanted <laughs> Just him bending down yeah, at the Honda as well. Different, but is Vaughn the character, like, Scarabouche, the character that, like, are the most jokes are made about, but also the saddest things at the same time are made about as well? Because uh, of all, like, the stuff I see, maybe just my audience, like, it, uh, it like, like equal amounts the saddest thing you've, video you've ever seen from a fan, equal amounts the funniest thing you've ever seen from a fan. How could you go wrong? Take the new 2017 Honda Fit, for instance. It's got a great look, gets great gas mileage, and it's way fun to drive. And I could fit my surfboard. <laughs> the surfboard it is brilliant. You just can't go wrong with a name like Honda. 
And you can't go wrong with a name like Honda. Not even like the idea of like it's it's a uh, Honda just good. It's just like the name of a Honda you can't go wrong with. <laughs> Thank you so much to send it, J Blake. Thank you. The next video is sent in by Emerald, and it is the Cave Collected Miscellany. Uh, which I said I was going to watch more of these. So much stuff caught up me. I have no problem saying that I was behind on videos for a little bit and like now I'm catching up. And when I say behind on videos, I mean like, uh, you know, whether it be editing issues or like sometimes like I'm making videos on the wrong days and stuff like this because stuff was happening. No problem saying it, but we're definitely catching up now. And don't worry about that whatsoever, guys, because it's actually all fun for me anyway, even if we're catching up on videos. Uh, but yeah, let's check this out. When Dory was planning to build her residence, she at first envisaged a cozy luxury home in a quiet spot. There's far captions from the here city. for Ger Germani. Um. Yeah. With ample space to house her countless possessions, but with the aid of renowned architect Cave, the palace. So this is Dane's left doing this voiceover, by the way. So like, like. That, that's when Dory was planning to build her residence she at first envisaged a cozy luxury home in a oh quiet God, we've been here. spot far from and we got grilled by those guys ample space to house her countless possessions oh God, the standing in front of it? architect Cave, the palace of Alcazar Zare has ended up as an iconic yeah it's landmark, beautiful known it's gorgeous Dory long. looking over it as well Dory occasionally grumbles about this no, he's in debt over it fate. But in Kaveh's life, unintended consequences like these are oh, all no. too typical. Is your key? Is that the client? Kaveh, so it's vision Wait. perfect, constellation perfect, Genshin perfect, Kaveh, okay. Oh, it's you! Kaveh is rarely without his assistant, Mirai, I love a multifunctional oh tool that runs on ancient technology, as well as assisting him with routine mapping work. Marak also helps Kave deal with all manner of So good, I love the moveset. Instance. I cannot wait to use Kave. We have to go deeper in the when desert to get his stuff though. Trying to strike a balance between aesthetics and practicality, budgeting is an essential yes. skill. Yes. When Kave crafts landscape, building, and courtyard type furnishings, some materials are refunded, ensuring efficient utilization. Oh really? Kaveh's normal attack uses Marak to combo so, up the So, force. like, again, they have these tools. Like, like we saw that same thing with Vaughn in the in the miscellany as well. So, like, there is a thing with Kaveh as well that he, like, will get, like, maybe, like, some refunds. Is that for the materials? Strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. I can't to see this. His charged attack consumes stamina Look over time. Look at that! Time oh, my God. To continuous rapid slashes, finishing with just, again, it's such a Kaveh thing to just, like, slash. walk through, like, and just as if nothing's happening. When he casts his elemental skill, Kaveh attacks to me, using Maroc's Can I be honest with you? To me, combat, in this sense, when Ka and Kaveh moves... Now, we saw in an actual um, event that Kaveh, like, do, like, you know, grabbing the crown, but that wasn't exactly combat. But then as soon as Kaveh, like, was like, you know, Kaveh, Kaveh seems a bit clumsy. But I feel like in Kaveh's moveset, uh, there is a lot of confidence there as well, you know? Ability. Performing a radial scan that deals AoE dendro damage and causes all dendro This is so cool. Yeah, we have to, to utilize this. I can't wait to utilize this. After unlocking the talent an architect's undertaking, when Kave is hit by dendro cores damage, including burgeon and hyperbloom damage, he will restore HP based on his oh, elemental neat. mass. Very neat. This effect can be triggered once per set time period. Breaking new ground. Yeah. So I'm guessing me pairing um, Kaveh with Nahida is the, probably one of the best bets because I feel like that like puts it like um, to, to explode the Dendro cores, but then maybe someone like Zing Show, maybe. Um, I don't know, maybe. Kaveh's or Barbara. Kaveh's elemental burst unleashes the full power of Maroc, which maps out a cubic area, dealing AOE Dendro damage to all enemies within it. And Wait, is that a combo with Yolan? Cores in range to burst. For a set duration, it also enhances Kaveh's combat capabilities by increasing his resistance to interruption, expanding his normal charged and plunging attack range, and converting his attacks into dendro damage that cannot be overridden. Additionally, all dendro cores created by your own party members' bloom reactions will deal additional damage when they burst. Very cool. These effects will be cleared once Kaveh leaves the field. 
the mind of an artist is always busily conjuring up strange and wondrous ideas, never stopping even in the Oh, look at you, beautiful man. After unlocking the talent, a craftsman's curious conceptions. Yes. During the period of Kaveh's elemental burst, after Kaveh strikes an opponent with a normal, charged, or plunging attack, his elemental mastery will be increased. This effect can oh, be triggered on a set time period and is stackable up to a limit. When the elemental burst duration I feel like expires, they have to be showing us combos that we could use as well, like intentionally, right? These effects are clear. The path of the idealist is rarely a smooth one. Even the kindest of souls must find the strength to confront the obstacles ahead. In battle, Kaveh makes deft use of his elemental skill. He scans his for as well. cores in a certain range, instantly causing them to burst That's so and deal cool. dendro damage to enemies. When energy is full, Kaveh uses Marak at full power, dealing dendro damage to enemies and enhancing his personal So yeah, there's a Zing show, show twice here. We do have Zing show. Kaveh continues to deal dendro damage with his normal attack and elemental skill, while boosting damage the music here as well is so, like, cores, vibrant. Finally tackling the problems in his life once and for all. Like, we know the song, but it's accompanying it that gets so vibrant. Many Look at Kaveh walking through the town. Look at this. Dealt by Probably bursting going to the pub. Hopefully. Finally tackling the problems in his life. Oh my god, the, the problems in his life. So, like, uh, what they're saying is, like, the actual, like, little dendro cores and stuff like that, and dendro pieces are, like, representative of the problems that he needs to tackle in his life. Really interesting way to put it, Dainsliff. Many struggle to understand how Kave, despite his academic brilliance, has wound up leading a life fraught with disappointments. Oh, oh he doesn't have any money. The objective truth is that Kave is his own worst yeah. enemy and brings most of his woes upon himself. And yet, I find myself reluctant to be too critical. Yes! Dainsliff gets it. After all, Surely anyone with a heart would be moved after witnessing Kaveh stand up for what Exactly. He exactly. Kaveh is in so much bother all the freaking time, right? Because he is just an amazing person. We literally saw right in front of us that there was a possibility that he could have made a mountain of money, but he chose his morals above all else. And he always will. He doesn't need a reward for what he does. He's in debt, even though he built one of the most beautiful places. Isn't that crazy? Imagine doing a job for someone, building a palace, and you're in debt to them afterwards. Like, that's crazy. Um, biggest point in that, I love the way they described the, the little dendro pieces that you have to explode as, like, finally tackling the problems that are in his life. Like, such a fantastic way uh, to describe that. Really incredible way to describe that. Um, yeah, like, these are always really fun because it shows me exactly how I'm going to be able to use a character like that. And I think I have a better understanding already of how to use Kave when we eventually get to use him. Now, to use Kave, we have to go a little bit deeper into the desert. We will be going there at some point to get his, uh, flowers and stuff like that. Uh, right now, I'm almost finishing level of catching. I'm going to level up Shangling, and then I'm going to level up, um, Nahida, and then Kave, and Mika. And I think then we're kind of done for Sumeru leveling up at the very least. And then we can, like, after that, you know, usually the first two weeks, two to three weeks of Fontaine, two weeks maybe of Fontaine before we get to like certain areas where we can level up other Fontaine characters. Usually those first week and a half or two weeks or whatever are used like touching up the other characters. You know what I mean? Like um, like the way you tune up a car. Um, touching up the characters. You know what I mean? Like, uh, like you know, like as you would with a painting, like touching up a painting. Um, yeah, it's going to be used for that. I can't wait to use Kaveh more. I really can't wait to use Kaveh more. Um, but I agree with what Dades have said. It's like, yes, a lot of the problems are stuff that, like, he brings on himself with his own worries and his own, you know, issues. But you can't help but admire the heck out of Kave. You can't. Um, and I will, I will stop, I will, I will literally fight anyone for that, man. I really will. Uh, thank you so much. The next video is sent in by, uh, Machapaki. And it says, this is my first time sharing a video, so here it goes. Great. And it's called Everything is a Lie by Way. Um, I believe it's what it's called. Um, yeah, let's check this out. I'm super interested. The, the idea of like lies in Genshin and everything is a lie is super interesting to me. Beautiful. Wait. Oh. When your character dies in Genshin and... I thought it was going to be like a really like serious like, like, I was like, oh, it's not a, I thought it was going to be a theory video. But then I was like, I was like, oh my god, it's actually like an emotional like music video. I was like, wow. I was like, oh my god. 
Oh, I did win. I was like, okay. When your character dies in Genshin Impact, they dissolve into this blue particle that yes. moves away. This also applies to human enemies. Smash. The editing is crazy. However, monsters like Rune Guards, non human. <laughs> the Tom audio? Turn to this instead. It looks like they're just evaporating. Whopper flowers can go to hell. Yeah, it looks like they're evaporating, right? Into like some fire. It's like red. According to Yaimiko, who is about to torture a to death. Don't you, why would they do that? Demo. But I thought you weren't ready to return to the cycle. Nope. She strangely mentions the word yeah. cycle. Which is also brought up in her birthday post in June 2022. I just finished reading this novel manuscript submitted by Yai Publishing House. The main character wakes up one day only to find that himself trapped in a time. Give me a heart attack. As the same day just repeats itself over. You must find a way to break the cycle. All right. Fast forward to August with the release of Soon. We experience the exact same phenomenon mentioned in the novel manuscript, where a traveler is trapped in the same day, repeating over and over. Yes. Again. The incident is called the Sunsara of the Subsidus Festival. Oh my god. Doubling the audio. There is a character called Yai Sakura who parallels Yai Miko from Genshin. Interesting. She's associated with an open world. I've heard this as well. A lot of people said that there's a lot of parallels with characters in um between the two games of Impact and uh like Genshin. Honka Impact. The concept of death and rebirth. Also, the cyclicality of all life, matter, and existence. The first Samsara in Honkai is a virtual simulation of history constructed using memory files from a few hundred years ago. It happened because the protagonist, Kiana Kusama, sneaked into a data center in order Love to this character design in the main character in Honkai Impact. The second Samsara is Kiana replaying history, but trying to change the outcome. The third Samsara is Kiana replaying history again, but this time trying to free Yaisakura's trapped soul oh, wow. from the black box. This song. We are in a samsara created by Irmin Soul. On our first journey, we're learning about the world of Tidat. It appears your understanding. Oh, Zhongli, I love you. Continues to grow. So she's all. Yes, we know she said she's already at the end of her journey, right? And is she trying to change the outcome? Is that what they're saying? Has engulfed the thrones. My war with destiny will see no end. I have already traveled through this world once. Once you reach the end of your journey as I did, you will see for there yourself. There it is. Yeah, that line of this world. I wonder. Meanwhile, travelers go after their journey is to save the Abyss Twin. Your journey has reached its end, but one final doorway remains. Step forth if you have understood the meaning of your journey. Defeat me. Command me to step aside. Show me that you are worthier than Whoa. I to rescue her. When a person dies in Teva, they transform. These sound effects are killing particles. me. <laughs> then it is absorbed into a cycle. So what they're saying, like the idea is that like once we finish our journey, we're gonna have to like change the cycle as well. For our sister? Nico. These blue particles are also seen when receiving artifacts from the petrified trees and domains. These petrified trees are directly connected to Irminsul. Irminsul is the repository for all of the information and memories of Teyvat, and the artifacts are themselves the physical manifestation of ideals and memories, which is a form of data- Which we see in their descriptions as well and how much they tell about history. Receiving artifacts equals to extracting data from Irminsul. Leyline Network, on the other hand, acts and functions like Irminsul's roots, absorbing information on everything that happened all over Teyvat in the form of data. When people die in Teyvat, they- Oh my god, the picture of Betty! 
which sinks down into the soil and is absorbed by the roots of air missile. These nutrients are transferred to the tree and used to produce fruits. These fruits are stars in huh? the sky. The Stranger Things music. The stars. The sky. We heard this as well. Again, this theory will has a stranglehold on me to this day, and I think it's probably the same for you guys as well. It has a stranglehold on me. But this idea that like every time our character dies, it goes like and like becomes like a maybe like a constellation for like a fruit for constellation. According to Mona, astrologers believe that the patterns of the stars map out the destiny of vision bearers. Past, present, and future, everything is written in the stars. The only way for this to be possible is that the entire Teyvat is within a samsara simulation created by the Irminsul. This visual as well. The Chinese name for Irminsul is... Leo. Meaning world tree. The Adanada refers to Irminsul as Sarva, which means whole, entire, all, and every. Both of these suggest that Irminsul itself... Have I seen a video by this person? I think I have seen a video by this person as well before. I think I have. Because I remember like the um, the comedy now. It's been a long time though. It's been a long time. If we look at a typical image of the world tree... We can see that the world is within the bubble, within the tree. Referring back to before sun and moon, it mentions that the primordial one used the eggshell to separate the universe and the microcosm of the world. There is an eggshell separating Teyvat from the real sky, meaning Teyvat lies within the air muscle bubble. The first time someone dies, all their data the gets first time. the air muscle, which forms a star that has information on everything that has happened Jesus. in their lifetime. At a certain point, Teyvat would eventually reach its inevitable destruction. The world would collapse. All data of the world would be absorbed by Irminsul and recycled to recreate the next world. As Samsara means cyclicality of all life, matter, and existence, including the world itself. As a result, Teyvat would progress into the next Samsara cycle. In this new cycle, people would eventually die again. Forming another star in the sky this is wild. In to the previous this idea star. in general. After many samsara cycles, there will be multiple stars in the sky that belong to one person. These stars. Are yeah, that's what I was thinking. That they become the constellations. Which turns out to be fruits grown on Irminsul branches. Which right reading people's constellations can predict their fate because it's stuff that already happened before. Jesus Christ, could you imagine? And the Traveler's Character card. It has this word. Which means fake. Because Traveler doesn't have... Traveler. As you are not from this world, I am unable to give you a prediction. All I can tell you is that your journey is far from over. Well, the Bistwins have completed their journey. Yeah. Her data is absorbed by Urban Soul. Urban Soul indeed does not have any information on yep. you. Yep. However, yep. The music here. <laughs> the freaking Hell's Kitchen music. Yeah, very strange stuff. What is the point of a samsara cycle? The answer lies in Al Haytham's story quest. The Hive Network. Okay. Would a goal drive new towards their ultimate evolution? The interesting thing is, the Hive Network is built with people that have strong Yana energy. Tell me, did Siraj tell you how he assigned numbers? Yeah, remember how the sages took advantage of the Akasha and extracted Yana energy from our heads back then? They left a document that records the amount of Yana energy that the Akasha had extracted. We don't like Yanaki, by the way. I don't know how Siraj got his hands on that document, but he used it as the basis for his numbering system. Hmm, I see. He believes that this data can be used to evaluate a person's computing power. What if... Tevat itself... 
is like a is like a perfected hive. Instead of using people's with strong young energy, it leeches off people with strong ambitions by granting them a vision. When a person's ambition reaches a certain strength, the gods look upon them with favor. A person's vision represents their Yes. Ambition. People gain constellations as they do as they go through Samasara cycles. So it's like every time they die, that's what a constellation is. That's what they're trying to say here. That's like an idea. Again, like this isn't like... I don't think it's too far fetched, right? Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's too far fetched. I think the idea that like um, every time they, a character dies, that they could it could it goes back into like um, Tevat is like uh, you know to me like that's not like a crazy theory, right? Like that the, the idea that like you know if if the ley lines are like connected, I guess to like um, the like Ermin soul. Or whatever, and like that, I like connects people's uh, memories, and like of course, and it's connected to almost all aspects of the world. Would it not make sense then as well that like people could re be reborn again? Like I don't like, I don't know how like strong this theory is in terms of like the community. Like if this is this theory that comes up a lot, but the theory of like what and why the world is fake is always comes up, and it's always a big deal for me. But I guess again, it's not like too far fetched the idea that like at least at the very basic of things, like and the way I would look at it is like that the um. How do I say it? That like the constellations are aspects of our life that we've already been through that have informed the next part of our fate or gives us power because we've already gone through it. It's, it's like when you like already have played a mission in a game and you failed that mission, but you know how to do that mission now. I guess that's why you could say, if that makes sense. Yeah. Interesting theory. Super interesting. Thank you so much for sending it, uh, uh, Macha uh, Pocky. Is that how you pronounce your name? Please let me know. Yeah, it's interesting theory, but I definitely want to hear what other people think because um, to me, like when I'm looking through, it's like, oh, like that does make sense. Oh, that could happen. That could happen. If that's the case, that could happen. I do love the theory as well that like when we finish our journey, we have to go and save our sister as well. Genshin 2. Uh, <laughs> but like, I think it might be more like uh, like at the last mission is probably to save our sister or something like that. But we'll see how it goes. We'll definitely see how it goes. Thank you so much. The next video is sent in by Dodo Dan and they say, I hope I made it in time. Dodo Dan, you always do. Let's check out Monster Hunter Lore Val Hazak. Let's check it out. A creature that reminds of a horror story, like an oh, undead zombie. Something that scares off mankind. But this mysterious elder dragon is far more than just no, a deadly creature like a zombie dragon? around the Rotten Vale. What was that? What the heck is that coming out of bodies? And welcome to another very exciting lore video. Valhazak, the Emperor Holy of the Rotten Vale. Hell. How did it manage to stay hidden <gasps> for so long? Wait, it's did he say the Emperor of what? Exciting lore video. Valhazak, the Emperor of the Rotten Vale. The Rotten Vale. Vale. That's disgusting to me. Anything that hides under like a bunch of bodies and bones. How did it manage to stay hidden for so That's long? That's actually terrifying. It's time to find out. Just like you should find out who today's sponsor is, because it's once again Patreon. Thanks to all of our patrons for supporting us Heck yeah. and for making the lore series possible. Known under the alias Putrid Elder, Valhazak is a creature from the New World that was only recently located by the guild. A lot of information is still being discovered. Look at but it! After it was officially tracked down, it has only been sighted it's like these a skin gels. of times. Its unique effluvium controlling abilities caught the guild's interest, and the research commission was craving more information about the Rotten Vale and Valhazak because of how new and different they were. Understanding how effluvium works is essential what is that when it happening? comes to understanding Valhazak. Effluvium are yeah. clouds of bacteria. They grow by consuming decayed meat. The Rotten Vale is the perfect environment for bacteria to thrive. Since I'm sorry, but Rotten is Vale is a is a cool. It's just such a sick place for name. It's like it's like we have to go to the Rotten Vale. It's like it already brings up fear. Naturally, full of monster corpses and nutrients to feast upon. It is also really important to differentiate between environmental effluvium and the effluvium Valhazak uses itself. When Val is using and controlling effluvium, it seems to become more aggressive Jesus, than environmental. Right, it, it looks it looks like a fog is, almost on it also harder to burn it away by using slinger torches and it will deal significantly more damage over time compared to regular environmental effluvium. This elder dragon is unable to produce these clouds of bacteria itself. 
but it can control and manipulate it. In order for the effluvium to grow and thrive around its body, it constantly carries around decayed meat and even covers itself in monster corpses. Val ah! <laughs> it covers itself in mo- what? Val is a slender and long elder dragon, covered in a pale blue and silver plating, reminiscent of fish scales. However, its body is covered partially by either effluvium or parts of monster meat and skin, which is caught by the spikes around its body. The putrid elder has a really unique jaw. Because it doesn't require to consume food normally, it features a unique double jaw. The inner jaw is perfect to hold prey. It can even oh, draw the inner jaw back are so to cool. its throat, where the prey will be surrounded by a cloud of effluvium oh, look, and it's so eaten by the deadly bacteria. So, unlike most monsters who hunt prey, Valhazak relies fully on the effluvium surrounding its body to absorb and- This is one of those things that, like, if I saw this creature, like, in any game, it's like, it would, it would, like, like, I don't know, it would, like, haunt my dreams. ...button dead bodies. Then Valhazak will suck the effluvium into its body through gill-like organs and feed on the nutrition from the effluvium. So the decayed meat does not only serve for its looks, it is part of Val's feeding habit. Wow. Valazak was discovered in the deepest layers of the Rotten Vale. That is his natural habitat. The Putrid Elder is the undisputed ruler of the area, standing way above Look at this setting as well here. The Putrid Vale is... Like, it reminds me of, like, like a game that, like, again, like, I only have, I know, people are like, oh, compared to Dark Souls. Like, you know, like, when Blight Town, like, you know, instills that fear or that feeling of disgust sometimes? I wonder if that's the same for Monster Hunter fans, where it's like, oh my god, the Putrid Veil. Vale. ...and the Great Chiros. For a long time, it remained unknown why the Elder Dragon was discovered that late and has been barely sighted in bones. general. It is rumored that Valhazak does not need to leave its hideout in order to get food. It simply covers itself in monster corpses and lets the bacteria do the rest, absorbing the nutrients it needs huh? to survive. It allows small monsters into its <gasps> territory, which is unusual for what? other dragons. But this is not an act of kindness. It will absorb their energy. You can see all the stuff surrounding them. falls on a very low level, they eventually turn into effluvium-producing corpses. This works perfectly because the Rotten Veil is known to be some sort of a graveyard it for monsters. It looks disgusting. Creatures yeah, when I say disgusting, I mean the coolest way possible, like it's metal. You know, it's like, it's like in the best way possible, it's like heavy metal. ...as a place to withdraw themselves during the last period of their life cycle. So naturally, there are going to be tons of nutrients for Valhazak to feed upon. While the Rotten Veil may not seem like the most appealing area for most life forms, it is essential for the world, especially the Coral wow, Highlands. Wow, look at the contrast. It serves the Coral Highlands as fertilizer, and thanks to that, this area above the Rotten Veil is blooming and Wait, so the food. Rotten Veil, like, hold on, it's like it's all, like it's like a compost heap? Since this Elder Dragon is the ruler of the Rotten Veil, it is far more than just the Apex Predator. It also protects the ecology okay. of this area and takes care of that place. Depending on the situation, the Elder Dragon will balance the effluvium levels for the optimal conditions. So we've seen that before veil. with, uh, with some increase... of these monsters. They will like protect the area they're in, and if the area changes, like it's a very frustrating thing. They will like kill things that come into the areas to protect the area itself uh, from changes. The least amount of corpses in the Rotten Veil Naturally, the quantity of effluvium also increases. This can lead to an imbalance, where the increased amounts of bacteria destabilize the rotten veil, possibly causing lack of oxygen. Due to missing oxygen, bacteria colonies will start consuming oh. each other, which leads to a drastic decrease in effluvium levels on top of a lack of oxygen. So, in order to prevent destabilization, Valhazak will consume all of the excessive, unneeded. Jeez, this guy's like, like, like. I know it sounds weird to say, like, instinctively, like, you know, you you mainly protecting the land it lives in. On the contrary, if the bacteria levels are too low, meaning if not enough clouds of effluvium cover the area, Val will actually disperse effluvium for the area to restore its protective layer. This leads to the conclusion that the Putrid Elder's very existence holds the ecosystem of the Rotten Vale together. Effluvium is extremely dangerous to both humans and monsters, especially the more aggressive effluvium Val manipulates. Because of the danger it serves, 
Val has a living armor, making yeah, it so difficult sick to look at. for other life forms to attack, since they risk their life getting in touch with the bacteria. In battle, the putrid elder will often make use of its effluvium in order to drain the prey's energy and force them to be a part of the bacteria-producing cycle. While this sounds extremely scary and dangerous, it also exposes a weakness. The more effluvium Valhazak uses, the less Val itself will be covered and protected by it. However, when its body is not surrounded by effluvium anymore, Val becomes significantly more agile. So it's like it's like a double-edged sword. You're like you're you're effed anyway. For the lack of effluvium. But isn't effluvium lightweight? So why does Val become more agile once it doesn't surround its body anymore? We assume that Val has to move quite slowly in order to make sure that the bacteria stays close to its body and fulfilling its protective cause. So once it uses too much of that bacteria in battle and its body is not protected anymore, it can start moving right. around faster. Small monsters with the unfortunate destiny <laughs> of being close to right. Isaac will be negatively affected by the bacteria. They show an increased tendency towards aggression. Furthermore, the bacteria can influence the color, behavior, or complete nature of the So monsters. this can actually happen in real life for like, like a fungus of some kind like that can like actually affect like neural systems for some animals. ...into mindless creatures hunting aimlessly for prey before they turn into corpses themselves. They essentially become Valhazak's zombie minions by That's losing terrifying. their free will. These small monsters will die once the bacteria consumes too much of their energy. Death is inescapable. Unlike the putrid elder that lives exclusively in the Rotten Vale, its variant, the Black Vale Valhazak, can also be encountered in the ancient forest. Black Vale Valhazak has spores on its body which disperse effluvium, so a different process of effluvium creation since the spores take care of that. The coloration is also slightly different. Green and white decorate its body, but similar to the normal Valhazak, the skin is How could you even get covered. close to this thing? Not by decayed meat, but rather pustules. So this is like a whole different... Like, let me see this again. Like, this is a whole different... Elder ...that lives exclusively in the Rotten Vale. Its variant... This is like a different vale variant. Valhazak ...can also be encountered in the ancient forest. Black Vale Valhazak has spores on its body, which disperse oh. effluvium. So a different process of effluvium creation, since the spores take care of that. The coloration is also slightly different. Green and white decorate its body. It's, oh my god. Similar to the normal Valhazak, Looks like it sores all over itself. Is also covered. Not by decayed meat, but rather pustules and spores. The variant has a special ability where the effluvium can stay on the ground for a while. Fatal and unexpected if touched by prey. Furthermore, some of the effluvium cannot be burned away using slinger torches, hinting towards the possibility that the variant's effluvium might be more resistant to fire. It is believed that the Black Veil effluvium is also the arch enemy of myself, you? which became clear when I was trying to beat this game without taking any damage. How? <laughs> How? But more on How? very soon. So make sure you are subscribed to the How? channel to not miss any of these upcoming videos. Both Val and Black Veil are definitely yes, they're terrifying with their unique effluvium controlling abilities. One manipulates effluvium with the help of bacteria consuming decayed meat, while oh, the other takes advantage so of disgusting. spores. All the little sores on it and spores. While a lot of monsters of the Monster Hunter franchise are interesting and unique in both looks and abilities, Valhazak adds a whole new depth into the mix. The interaction between this elder and the Rotten Vale is incredibly fascinating. Who would have thought that it protects the Rotten Vale and its creatures as the true apex predator of that region? I hope you guys liked this video. Which monster would you like to see next? Let us know down below in the comments. And as always, we'll catch you guys in the next one. No, Peace. Um, I want to say that this was scarier there's all the patrons well done that's the scariest monster of the thing i've seen <laughs> that i've seen so far like these like the, like the first one there especially like acting as like a compost heap basically but like is able to absorb like creatures basically making the creatures like feed not even like you know and maybe intentionally but they're feeding on the stuff they're probably so plump when he absorbs all their nutrients absolutely insane stuff like the world of monster hunter like, goes so deep that it even has some of the scariest things like that that I've ever seen. Like, like if I was playing this game and I encountered one of those creatures, I would run a mile. You would hear me scream.
you would all get like a sneeze or an itch on your the back of your uh, head or something. Like, hey, what's what 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 happened there? You know, or like a cold breeze would come over you because you know exactly what the fear I would be <laughs> spreading. <laughs> it would be so scary. Like I love the design too, but like again, it's like one of those things where like it's like so, again, I use the word metal to describe some of the monster stuff because it is that. It is like so freaking metal in the way it's doing things. But like again, everything has a purpose in Monster Hunter. All these creatures aren't just creatures that are placed in random places. They have like a purpose to be there, a reason for be there, an ecological reason for be there. They're they're protecting their ecosystem. So cool. Thank you so much for sending Dota Dan. The last video today is sent in by Shallow, and it is uh, so for the daughter of uh, it says for the daughter of a servant evil, but mostly the daughter of evil is the Pride Ark. There are a few more that wouldn't make sense if I sent you now. And the prince's name is Princess Rilan Lucifen du Astrike, her brother, the servant Alan Avadonia. The daughter of White's name is Clarice, Michaela, the Millennium uh, Wildland Tree, Ne Fu Tavi. It was recorded in the light in the novel, but Len and Alan didn't kill her. Again, it won't let me click see more. Oh, it did, let me click see more now, which means we can. Can I click see more? On, it won't let me click see more on Malcolm's one. I guess it doesn't like Malcolm. Malcolm, if you want to talk, talk about Patreon with that, they're like slighting you here. I'm like literally tapping it like. Oh, I don't know what is happening with that. Well, it says, um, Kyle Marlon, the man in blue, the one uh, king who fell in love with Michaela and rejecting Rilan Lucifer and Joshua's proposal. Jermaine Avedonia. Um, the lady in red, a mercenary warrior renowned for her fame, rising up in rebellion. There's a lot of characters here. Her living with her father and foster brother, Alan Avedonia. Jermaine knew that Alan and Aurelian became close and was confident in Alan escaping. Unfortunately, after the battle, she was bleeding where her vision was in blur, capturing the princess. Five days later, she finally visits the underground prison to only recognize to see Alan's face as finally visits the underground prison to only recognize to see Alan's face as, um, sorry, Alan's face, he explains his past and hidden story of his life before. And Jermaine wanted to let Al, Bla Bla there's so many characters here, released, but Kyle, the man in blue, heard of it the same day before and stated he would, okay, let me read this again because there's so many characters here. Jermaine Avedonia, the lady in red, a mercenary warrior renowned for her fame, rising up a rebellion, and her living in fa with her father and foster brother, Alan Avedonia. Jermaine Avedonia knew that Alan and Rilan became close and was confident in Alan escaping. Unfortunately, after her battle, she was bleeding where her ver uh, vision was in a blur, capturing the princess. Five days later, she finally visits the underground prison to only recognize the Alan's face as he explains in his past in the story of his life before. And Jermaine wanted to let Abdel Reese Kyle, uh, the man in blue, heard Kyle, the man in blue, heard of it the same day before and stated that he would be uh, due to still be executed. So Jermaine knew that she was, that, that it wasn't her. Um, Alan had killed her lover. Uh, I'm going to take you in a loop back to the beginning where it started, but in a strange, confusing way. No CCs needed. Yeah, so Jermaine was the person that that was, that was found, obviously knew. I think we saw in her interpretation of that as well. I think she knew exactly what was going on there. Let's check this out. For the first time. I learned the word called mom. I memorized the word called dad. Oh, baseline. I learned the word called wind. You said it was going to be strange and confusing, so I'm expecting that here. Oh, God. So sorry. Let's give it back to Sarah. I had it. I did. I had it. Oh, I'm so stupid. I mean, just reacting to nothing there for a second. Apologies. You probably heard it in the audio <laughs> in the background, actually. I learned the word called wind. Again, these different like mem memorization of the word, the words. What? I 
And it's like I guess like it's like maybe like how you how you learn about the world, I guess. To convey what I'm feeling now. What sort of words would be correct? Oh, it's like learning the proper words to describe things as well. Continue my wordplay. So it's like, again, it's trying to like understand words and know how they adapt to the world or something. You, get, you, you don't feel bad about giving me extra context about this because I know it might just be dumb. Bend the truth. I don't know what the word lie is, so learning about bending the truth. So it's about. I, it's, it's all these different experiences, like, are what, like, maybe. Treachery, crime. Are helping them learn about the world and the words to describe those things in the world. Whipping electric chair? Jesus. When you abandon me. Obviously, like, we don't take this literally, right? What sort of words would apply? It's kind of like... How you would learn about the world, I guess. You know, it's like, oh, this is what this means. This is what this feels like. I don't want to know. Wordplay. Wordplay is like the essence of this. Yeah, I wonder if it, is, if it is we're not supposed to take it literally. You know what I mean? If it's like maybe this is how like, you know, we all learn about the world in a way, maybe. I don't know. It's like when someone betrays you, you learn the word betrayal. When, when you see the sky, you learn the word sky, you know? Or maybe it's finding out the true meaning of those words through life experience. Like the song is good. Too. Like this part is really good. Interesting. Okay, so it was like I did like good morning. Okay, thank you. Farewell. Again, I don't. I. I'm not like again. If my interpretation is wrong with this, please by by Lord. Um. Call Calvin out on this stuff, for sure. Not call me out, obviously, but be like, you know, hey, Calvin, I'll be there no matter what. But help me out with it. Interesting. Okay, again, I'm not quite sure. I'm not quite sure. Like, to me, like, it seems like um, here you were saying like the daughter white's name is Clarita and there's like a great explanation of all this stuff when I read because again there's a lot of names the first time I read it but it's actually like a really good explanation of like what happened and who Jermaine is um, and I'm, th I'm very thankful for that but this is the beginning where it started yeah this is really interesting the story of the st daughter of evil is like really really interesting and the story of evil it's super super, super interesting yeah I wonder I wonder exactly what because again my interpretation of it is that it's like this is like when like yeah I know the word lie we all know the word lie, but it's more about like, you truly know the word lie when you were first lied to. You truly first know, know the word punishment when you first see a punishment, um, if that makes sense. Yeah, that was really cool. Thank you so much for sending in, um, uh, Shallow. Uh, the next video is sent in by Malcolm Conde, and it's some months ago. I sent in the back rooms. Yes, found footage. It was very interesting. Uh, Kane Pixels is the creator of these videos, published many small videos adding to their lore of the back rooms. Um, so they put together a video, working on this for quite a while, and I put them to order that follows the narrative as well as the, uh, added in title cards at the start of each which show their dates and their timeline. Super interesting. For some reason it's not letting me click see more on this. 
Uh, but let's check this out. Thank you so much, uh, Malcolm Conde. Let's check this out. So um, I went to a different device to watch this video because I didn't want to... Um, uh, because I didn't want to miss anything, and there is subtitles that Malcolm Conde added, so we're actually going to, like, watch this now, um, and, uh, see with the subtitles here, and I, I'm going to watch, we're going to watch it at the end here, um, because I waited until the end, uh, to actually see, uh, this as well, so let's check this out here, I almost forgot, because I said the last video was last week, and I was like, no, we're doubling back around to Malcolm Conde's video, let's check this out. So we actually have subtitles for this as well, so... Which is interesting. I wonder what's um is it because it's it's not un you're not able to understand it is what they said. Man, it's so creepy just looking at it, isn't it? It's so so creepy. What's going on here? Like, these are like, um, a memory board or something? Like, in a computer? It's like a flood? It's been a while since he watched it. It's a few months now, I'd say. Two or two, or two months or so. Wait, okay, so there's people doing, like... Like, science stuff? Like, with computers and things? But they're old computers. Again, like, look at this as, like, looking out on the... They, were they doing experiments on this place? What does it say? Interesting. Okay, it's like it's like it's like it's a very creepy tone to it, but I'm just not sure exactly what's like. Like, are they doing experiments on this place? The third test, July second, nineteen eighty-eight. The third test, so nineteen eighty-eight. By the way, I was ne I, most of us weren't born. Um, July second, nineteen eighty-eight. The ASIN research facility tested its low proximity magnetic distortion. Distortion system. For the third time, it is regarding the results of the experimentation have not yet been released. During a press conference held in April of 1988, I am the vice director of the ASIN Foundation described the intention of these tests, stating this program is granted backing. backing from the so it's government. States. Oh no. Wait, what? They were trying to make a storage space? What? So they were trying to form, like, a space for people to live in and store things? That's crazy. So it was a government backed thing? What 
happened here. Like, there was like a full distortion there. First contact. Contact? I don't, oh yeah, FBI. There you go. There you go. But the company is called Async, I'm guessing then. And this is the sixth test. Place the text. There's all these different modifications they did to this experiment as well. So are they they're trying to create space for people to live in. It's it's a solution to the how like housing issues. God forbid the government just spend some money <laughs> on housing. God forbid. Oh no, Mr. President, Mr. President, we we decided we're gonna we're gonna. We're gonna, um, we're, 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 we, we have solved the housing crisis. What is it? We're gonna m get more land and more houses. That doesn't sound very good. What if instead, what if instead we create the back rooms? <laughs> okay, Mr. President. I've solved it. So this is 1989, by the way. Oh my, yeah, look at the, yeah, the distorting again. Turn it off. You do turn it off. Maybe do. Oh my god. So that's how it was created there? Or maybe they found it? Or maybe they opened the door to it? Missing persons. That's crazy. So they opened like a door or something to. Oh my god, that's so sad. What were they thinking? Just build a few houses, man. All to save some money? Oh my god, 28 years old. That's so. Oh my god, that's so creepy. That's a baby. That is a baby. Leave the babies out of it. <sighs> Look at that, there's a spike. There's a spike at the first contact and then it like went down a bit and then it went right up, oh my God. Look at that. Look what this thing created. Look what they opened up. Async. And now they're exploring it. And here's the thing, I understand human, like, curiosity. Like, you could not explore it. Like, you could not. Like, it's impossible. Right? Like, you couldn't not. But at the same time, you probably couldn't pay me. It's so creepy, the quietness of this. What is that? Hold it. What is that? I don't know. I've never seen this thing down. It's sitting down? It may just be part of the environment. What in the world? Yeah, it's like the only place that's deteriorated. No, that's a person. This makes no sense. This wasn't in the last report. So it's a new missing person? Definitely new. 
That is so creepy. And it's like trailing up. Organic. organic. Some kind of fungus. Subject is male. Um, somewhere this is horrifying. 18, 21 years old. I estimate that the time of death was around five days ago, but. Due to the severe tissue damage, it's it's hard to say for sure. Look at that! Look, it's like like and it is a fungus. It's like completely like taking over it. Cause of oh damage, like, god! Nutrition. I was able to recover most of the digestive tract. That's so creepy. So yes, things start to decay from what we would consider to be natural. The decomposition process appears to have been stunted somehow it, it's like it's like portions of the body stopped decaying and, and were sustained other areas however were completely overtaken by culture what? so uh, I took uh, samples of some of the material here <clears throat> first I, I thought it was a an aggregated collection of pseudomenus fluorescence, but uh, it seems to be close. I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. Bacillus, being honest with you, which it should be completely benign, but well, really, I I, I don't know what to make of this, Mr. Beck. That's so creepy. May I ask? Uh, where this subject came from. Where'd it come from? You know where it came from. Wait, did he even tell the autopsy, autopsy report guy? About where it came from? You couldn't do a movie about this, by the way, because, like, you'd have to do, like, an hour and a half of just, like, very slow walking for a while, and it would be so creepy, but, like, it obviously just wouldn't make a lot of money. That's why you couldn't do it. But it would still be the most terrifying movie you'd ever see. Oh my god. Wait, what? Is that a face? Huh? Oh, sorry, it went, it went into the other video we already watched as well, but like... I got, I got a bit stunned there for a second. That was like a face on the back room, so saying it's like an entity? What in the world? <laughs> so what I'm gathering for that is it was a government-backed experiment to find a space for people to live in and to solve like maybe like a housing crisis and and a budgetary stuff like this. But they ended up creating like this kind of like portal where people started getting going missing. And this entity is f and it, it's an entity itself. Because there was a smile there. Has, I'm guessing that's what I'm, I'm interpreting that as. Jesus Christ. I <laughs> like, I, I thought it was just like this random thing, but like, it seems like it was found, like it seems like there was experiments being done on it. You could see the, see the spike in missing people, so there was a direct line of when the people went missing and things like this. But first of all, Malcolm, thank you for making that, and thank you for, like, putting subtitles on it, because that does help quite a bit, of course. I can imagine I couldn't really understand what was happening there. But it's weird, it's like a fungus growing over, like, this creature. What, like, I wonder if time works differently there, if it was, like, a creature that put, like, fungus on this guy. Maybe you preserved them in some way, but then again, they were mal 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 there was malnutrition. Super interesting. I, w I wonder if there's like a modern version of this. Like, did people, did, are people still experiment on this? Is the American government and async still working on this? Holy hell. Well, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this. Thank you so much for sending the Malcolm and thank you so much for um, putting subtitles on that because that's like shocked me. <laughs> it's like shook me to my gore. Uh, thank you so much to Ty Faro2, JB Bull, Johnny the Banana, the Ghost of Inazuma. 
delicious Felix, Yuled, Radish, Anusa, Shibata Bread, Malkinday, Death Trap, and Lynx Marky, and I will see you all very soon. Bye-bye.